while we watch Danny Danger frantically start logging in. <laughs> You're not even logged in. Jeez. All right. Uh, welcome everyone to AE D and D. We are. It's Friday night. I'm excited because if I'm not mistaken, it's a raid day. Uh, I'm Bork, your host, as usual. I'm playing Sarah Snow today. We have Dying Danger playing, not Dying Danger, he's playing Drusilla Gravemore. Yo! And the Man Bear as our untrusted DM. That's a me! Uh, yeah, so we're playing the Tales of Barn Tome today, uh, again. Uh, we're... Yeah, we, we're hitting like 17 in the episode count, which is pretty much equal to the Guild of Brockheart. So I don't know how long the Man Bear feels like continuing or if he wants to call it, but uh, there's no... I'm ready if he can, keeps going for like a year or something. Less less at work I'll have to do, right? Um, <laughs> less work we'll both have to do. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <fuck both> you. <laughs> and, anyways, uh, let's send it on over to him, and he can give us a recap. And uh, yes, set us off for today. I I just can't wait to start. Okay, so as our friend Bork has stated, it is indeed raid day. So I'm going to try at least semi hard to kill our our dear friends Sarah and Drusilla. And we'll see how it goes. They have done a good amount of preparing, though. So I am semi-confident I can kill them, but also meh. I, I don't know. We'll see. Um, Last week, I believe we finished up all the busy work. Uh, Drusilla and Sarah did their week of preparation. No. La, 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 la. Preparation. There we go. I can speak again. And um, finished up their ballistas. They finished up the training of the snipers. Uh, set a solid plan with the council to where they are taking one less spearman due to one of them having died. And the council is taking two less spearmen. Uh, they also have. I want to check out just a second. Let me look at my paperwork. Paperwork. Okay, they've got four ballistas on each wall with three shots per ballista. The ballistas are long range, single target, big damage. They have five long ring archers, which can shoot eight squares accurately. Uh, four squares equals a crit. Of those five, I believe Drusilla and Sarah are getting two. So I will have to mark them somehow, make them pretty. I'm just going to put a big red dot on their head. That sounds fun. Big red dot. Bam. Big red it. dot equals sniper. You guys can't see it because we're not on the page. You're not I'm on the page. I'm waiting for that. There we go. Okay, anyway. Uh, yeah, so they've got five snipers, four ballista with three shots per ballista, and two, four, six, eight, nine pikemen, and three regular archers. That is their defensive units for this raid. So, yeah, that's my recap, I think. It was a pretty shitty recap and all over the place, but that's all I got. Yeah. going to talk about, like, all the... The Inter City drama? Drama? Yeah, with, like, all the NPCs and stuff, and uh, the Church of Malice cozying up with the... Uh, the thieves den. You're not cozying up with them. Just Sybil likes Malice a little bit more because he saved her orphans. Okay. But no, I wasn't planning on talking about that. I want to focus on raids. Okay. It's raid day. It's raid day. Raid day. 
Okay. So let's get it started. You guys wake up. It's raid day. You guys know you need to get out of the walls and you get out of fast so you can be ready. No. For whatever everything hits. Ah, bite me. Sarah springs. I'm heading right there. Uh, I spring up too. Sarah's not. She's not excited. She just wants to be on her best. Like, be on alert and whatever. I'm excited. But Sarah's not. She's like, okay, pumping herself up. Like, we got this. Drew's nervous. Uh, yeah, I'm. I'm like uh shaking a little bit. Like, I'm nervous. Last time a giant almost fucked us up, and they're probably gonna throw two giants at us with like the heads of um beholders. I don't know what to expect, so I'm trying not to dawdle. I make my way, grab my food, and head out to the battlefield. There. Ah. Uh, Make sure I sit down, collect myself, eat a nice hearty breakfast because, well, whatever they have options. If I remember mm-hmm. correctly, they don't really have much uh, the day of. Bread and cheese. Well, I make sure I uh, pack enough and pack a couple spares in my pockets. Okay. You do that. And then I head on out. I'm assuming our timelines are not crossing right now. Well, you guys are, you know, in the, basically you either hear or see Drusilla, like, rushing, however you feel like seeing and or hearing this. Mm -hmm. And, um, like I said, you hear and or see her rushing out the door. If I get up before you, you're probably going to hear me opening up the room next to yours. Well, I mean, I'm I'm spending some time up in my room before I go down and eat breakfast. So You're probably going to hear, like, a door slamming. You you hear the, the speed and the rushing of Drusilla to get ready. Uh, uh, you do your thing. You go down, you get your bread and cheese, you munch, you shove some in your pockets, and you head out. Excellent. And you guys then come to your way. Which one is it? This one. Okay. Blam. As you can see, the shadows have already encroached. The foggy line of shadows that hardens your viewpoint. Uh, Sarah, I don't know where you want to be right now. You're just kind of there. Drusilla, you're where you were at the start of the last battle. Um, as you noticed, I put nice little red dot on the sniper archers. So those are your two that can shoot up to eight squares away accurately, uh, four squares away crit. The rest of your archers are four squares accurate. Um, anything over that has a higher percentage chance of missing. You have your, your ballistas as well. In order to use a ballista, though, you much must man it with an archer. So your archer can fire normally on its own or fire the ballista that it's closest to. If another giant comes up, they should probably just take a step back and take that uh, accuracy hit. (laughs) Pretty sure one of them got walloped by a giant last time because they were up there that close. They were, but that's not my call. Um... So that that's if you guys want to change anything, let me know. If you want to change your setup or anything, let me know. Uh, put me in front of this guy right here. Have me and that pike man switch positions. Hey, I'm gonna go over this again because we went over this last time. You cannot attack over this with your melee weapon. No, but he can. This is- this gets me a little bit closer for my range spells. I know last time I did, like, smite attacks and stuff. Okay. I don't want to be shooting over somebody's shoulder. I'm going to start on the left side, actually. Oh. What's my HP? Yeah, make sure you guys change your stats and everything so they 
aren't from the last battle. Um, right, Drusilla, you only have nine life, apparently. You're gonna die really fast. Actually, for me and the pipe man, can I trade positions for with them without wasting an action? Since they're friendly units? It's a movement action. Okay. Moving. Okay, then that pipe man can take his position back. He he wouldn't really have it's not an action action. Um, not like an attack action, it's just a movement. I just didn't want to like, you know, waste time trying to like get between him and move him behind me, you know, in the heat of the action to like sling a spell or something. Okay. Oh, I'm not actually tired. I really don't even know why I'm doing it. I'm just yawning. Oh, you're man. just in a constant state of tired. Do you need to stand up, walk around a little bit, get the blood flowing a little bit? Do some oh, jumping okay. jacks. All of you. Uh, okay, so as you guys said, you kind of said. I know you were. So. Um, you guys stand there for a while, and you're kind of looking out into the fog, and. It's it's rolling and boiling, and you, you can't see anything past it. Uh, it's you know it's like this for a good couple hours before anything happens. Maybe the shitty the the shitty the city should develop some windmills to blow all that fog away. <laughs> uh, I'm looking over my shoulder during this as well. Towards the city? Yeah. Oh, well, you don't really see anything. Uh, but as you guys are, you know, your men are tired, you're tired, but you're all on high alert, and it's kind of stressing on you. The fog finally starts to roll back, slowly rolling back. I'm just going to reveal all of it, but imagine it, like, slowly rolling back. And as it does, it rolls over this first line here. And you just see just thousands of centipedes. Each one of these is a centipede swarm. Oh, I don't like this. Each one I don't like what? this at all. Each one of the little guys is a centipede swarm. Okay. So, like, thousands of centipedes are basically here, just fucking churning. And then these, it rolls back even farther, and you see these guys, these giant ants, sitting back behind the centipedes, it kind of rolls over their black carapaces, and you see the, the sunlight kind of shine off their carapace. And then finally, these guys. These are giant assassin bugs. Um, so yeah, it rolls over them. I don't know much about assassin's bugs. I just looked up a picture, and that's what apparently what they look like. So. Oh, <laughs> I don't like that one bit. So yeah, that's, uh, that's what you see as the fog rolls back. But they're they're all kind of sitting there milling around. Like none of them are approaching yet. Um, I want to use knowledge monster. On which one? Uh, the first row. Uh, the, the one centipede form. Yeah, the the centipede ones. Okay. Uh, before you make your roll, let me ask Dan: Is there anything you want to do? Like take a pot shot or try to kick things off? <laughs> Or are you just going to wait and see what happens? Oh, I was going to have the uh, archers line up, like, all of them, and you're ready in, like, all loose arrows at once. You do the, you, you know, the, like the, the a, classic, like... A coordinated volley. The, yeah, the classic movie, like, all right, all right, man, line up, get ready, knock your arrow, aim, hold... And then have them hold unnecessarily for like two minutes. <laughs> and then once a few of them get picked off, they are like, okay, no! <laughs> <laughs> okay, so as Sarah is on top of the wall preparing her line, Drusilla, Drusilla hears her shouting her words. Uh, Drusilla does a knowledge monster check on the centipede swarm. Go ahead and roll your knowledge monster. The first ones I see, and... I still have a zero in the skill, even though I think I've used it like maybe four times. But either way, slash RD20 plus three for intelligence or just plus skill in the talent? It's intelligence and skill for knowledge checks. Okay, my level is zero, so I'm just going to do intelligence. Normal 20. 
natural 20 or a natural 20? Un, I mean, uh, unnatural 20. Okay. Unnatural 20 is pretty good. Um, apparently, you've only used it once. Um, a dirty 20. But, oh, that's because of all the uh, chances to fail. That's you know, with my that's, luck, I get more that's fails. a natural 20. Yeah. Unnatural 20. You can tell that, um, you know, there's... There's three to six centipedes per swarm. Um, they're hard to hit, not because they have high armor, but because they're, they're not big. They're small centipedes. They're just three to six of them in each swarm. And so, like, there, there's at least, like, six of them in each swarm. So they all move around, and it's hard to pick one off which makes it harder to hit them. Um, I'm not going to give you an accurate AC. You can also tell from your knowledge monster check that their bite is indeed poisonous. You can see glints of liquid like dripping from their teeth. So you know that if they were to bite you, you would get poisoned. Can I determine a name for them from my memory and knowledge of monsters? Centipede swarm. Just centipede swarm? They're just masses of centipede under yeah. the control of something. Yeah. something okay um and then for a secondary action this turn i'm going to activate paragon surge and tell my pikemen to prepare themselves um don't know how because i don't know what the other mobs are capable of okay so as you activate paragon surge sarah finally shouts after her long-awaited hold Fire! Can, can I fire with them? Sure, if you want to. Um, you didn't really specify any targets, so I'm just going to say you're firing at the front line of centipede swarms. Oh, yeah, that, um, that, that's what I was assuming. So go ahead, roll 5d20 for each of them, and uh, an attack for you as well. I was assuming I would just shoot at the swarms because it's a little out of... Some other range. Nice rolls. Except All for the right. last two. Uh, uh, so a 15, a net 20, a 16, and then followed by a 7, 9 for the crew. And then a 22 for myself. Whichever one you're attacking. Uh I mean since I'm by myself, I'll 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 aim at the bigger one and let you know. Okay, that's fine. Uh okay, so like uh we'll go with these guys from left to right. So this guy, you know, picks off a centipede. Did you ping? I uh, no I didn't ping. Oh, sorry, okay. I just clicked on him. This guy picks off one centipede, his arrow goes through like one singular centipede this guy manages the skewer he's a sniper so he manages to skewer two of them just like one arrow goes through two centipedes this guy gets another one but these two for some reason they kind of like overshoot this guy is overconfident trying to pull off uh trying to pull off going through the centipedes into the ants and ends up just shooting his arrow in the dirt and this guy is kind of like i don't shoot and just kind of shoots his arrow into the dirt uh you do hit your giant amp so go ahead and roll damage Does this count as two basic actions? Uh, hold on, hold on, Sarah. hold on, hold on. I, I, I hit the wrong button. Um, did that count as two basic actions? This was just something free I was giving you guys. This wasn't like an actual turny turn. Okay. Um. Um. Yeah, and you're gonna have to say what you said after I roll. Okay, um, so after you guys, oh, you hit your ant. 
But um, after you guys fire the arrows and you, the centipedes start to squirm around, and then um, Sarah, you shoot your arrow at the bigger target. And you kind of like get off the top of his chitin, but you see a nice deep dash in the chitin uh, of the ant. But at that point, it it's almost like a tidal wave as all these centipedes start moving. Mm. They climb. They don't even bother with the, the the little ditch. Is almost like nothing to them. They climb down, uh, which is five feet, and then they climb across, which is another five feet, and they climb up, which is another five feet. So that's three. So that's one, two, three. Can six. I do something when I see that they start rushing? Oh no! Now we're officially on turns. So oh, it'll go. It'll go enemies, and then you guys. We should have invested in a line of oil and a couple of matches. <laughs> um, so six, that gives them 30 feet, so that's as far as they can go. So basically, right now, these three in the front are on even lines with your three pikemen in front of you. The rest of these centipedes are starting to climb the wall. They've got another... I want to say another 10 feet to get to the top of the walls to be even with the archers, so they can't do anything yet. But these three in the front are going to try to bite these guys that are in front of them. So I'm just going to throw this out here. My Spikeman spent that ambush round, that free round, performing a preparatory action, if you would feel so obliged to call it that. Can they get a reactionary attack against oncoming attacks? Oh, because you can't progressively name something. If you wanted them to do something during that free action, then you should have said it during the free action. You can't do it now because I put a guy there. That's just backwards play. And I mean, they're fighting. Allowed. I thought they were expecting it, but okay. You have to make the call. Nice try, though. Anyway, so they're going to try to bite these guys. Let's see what the goal is here. Uh... That's the damage. Okay, their plus one DC is Oh, I only did two. Um, I'm guessing the 19 hits, but I gotta do another one. Okay, so... The middle guy and the right guy are gonna get bit. They both need to make fortitude, or DCs. Roll a d20. Uh, I'll say plus three for each of them to see if they can avoid being poisoned. While I roll their damage. Okay, so they both managed to avoid being poisoned. I only needed two, not three. Um, this guy takes two damage. This guy takes one damage. And then the ants move forward to here. And it the bothers me that you don't have them snapped to the grid. I thought they were. There, are you happy now? I am actually. These guys are actually going to go wide. What, buddy? Oh, no, buddy. I'm not making a new map right now. Okay. So, it is your guys' turn. Rochambeau or whatever you want to do for who gets to go first. Sarah and the Archers or Drusilla and the Pikemen. Okay. Um. Well, that's not Rochambeauing. That's just saying I'm going to do this. Yeah, he can go. <laughs> Okay, go ahead. 
I, all I said was okay, um. Um, okay, um. Can I throw out a molten orb far away enough that it won't hit our pikemen, but it will overlap with like a good chunk of it? Um this. Uh, Borton orb is thirty by thirty, correct? Um see what it says. Molten orb. Thirty by thirty. One round per one on. Doesn't say actually. It does uh, just says 10, one round 15, per uh, level. And fifteen. So it'd be about that big. I would like it to overlap with the trenches a little bit. Give me a second. I'm trying to move the damn thing. Yet. Things just keep getting worse. You're like almost there. The centipedes are overlapping with our units now. Eat me. Hey, you're moving things before you even Eat know where me. I want. I'm trying to move the godforsaken circle. Woo. No, Everything's running away from it before they even know where it's going to be. <laughs> if I could, I would reach through this thing and slap you. <laughs> Why is it so hard to select circles? So thin lines? Why can I not move it now? Ah, you bitch! Yeah, On a different note, I got that uh, D and D cookbook, and I made two oh, yeah. things out of it. What did you make? Both were really good. I got, I made the uh, mol molasses nut bread, hmm. whatever that was. That it was missing something, but it it was still hearty, and it I liked it. Um, I think the type of molasses you have can alter it quite a bit. But then I also made like the Keith Pa, whatever it is. It's like supposed to be like the elven snack that supposed to, supposed to like give them energy for hours type of thing. Uh it, it was like apricot and orange compacted together into like nice little balls. That was really good. It was a good snack. It's very healthy too. Is that what you're looking to do? Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. I absolutely hate you for making me go through all that, by the way. Um, I absolutely love you for going through all that for me. So with that, they all get a reflex check to see if they manage to avoid being caught in it. Good luck, centipedes. You're kind of crowded down there. They can literally climb walls, and there's swarms. Three, D20. Let's see what their reflex is. Reflex is plus seven. Ooh, damn, that's huge. Yeah, that's pretty big. No uh, one, one net twenty. So this guy like fucking just like climbs up the wall just outside. I'm actually gonna leave his thing there because I don't want to overlap your guy. But basically, it's your guy is like being surrounded by the centipedes. They're in the same spot. Yeah, the centipedes get free reflexive actions on a defense check. It's a reflex save. They're not attacking him. They're just standing there. They're they're on his grid. That's creepy as hell, man. That doesn't actually do anything. They're just on his grid. That's anyway, right. this guy fails, so he's going to take damage. And this guy succeeds as well since he got 24 with the plus 7. So he is as well going to be basically on the same grid as this guy. Nah, I gotta roll for, the, roll for the ants. The ants' reflex is zero, so they're probably all going to get burnt. I don't like them being in the same grid as people. It's scary. Well, deal with it, punk. Um, well, that was only two. I need one more. Okay, so this guy... 
manages to make it out. And this guy manages to make it out. But this guy is Chris Critter. So roll damage. And then two of them will take full damage. We'll take damage. Mm, Molten Orb is only a D6. One damage for everybody involved. That is just RNG hate you there. <laughs> just, just like one of those moves that looks really cool on paper, and then you use it. And it's just like okay, people got plenty of time to get out of the way. If they they wait too long, it's not that bad. Pikeman, you can roll for three Pikeman. All right. And any the way, um. No, because you didn't do any special training for them. The way I kind of imagine it is like Drusilla is standing there and she's channeling this orb and it starts to kind of like form in the middle. And then as it grows out, like some of the targets will notice it and, you know, fucking run away. Others will be like, what's going on? And end up in the middle of a giant ball of fire that's <laughs> melted in. But that's how I picture it. That's why... A reflex save can save you, because if you notice the ball of fire, you're going to run the fuck away. I understand. My strategic viewpoint on this move was mostly to keep the centipedes from encroaching upon us. I was hoping to make them backtrack a little bit and other not encroach, not creep up onto the pikeman's territory. I was just, This was a getaway tool, and all it did was expedite their approach. It rolled really well. The, the centipedes rolled really well. The ants rolled mediocre. Either yeah. way, uh, roll your roll for your pikemen. Three of them can attack. You can actually roll for five of them, but two, if you want this guy and this guy to attack as well, they will roll at disadvantage because you know there are people in front of them. But uh, these three will roll like normal. Um. So rolling at disadvantage, if they roll poorly enough, can there be disastrous uh, consequences? Yeah. Hold on. Let me roll for the three first. There you go. Uh, not bad. Uh, the 16 and the 18 hit, the 13 does not. And guys in the rear are going to try and uh, strike Spartan style over their comrades. Do 2d20 for each of them, and the lowest is what you take. And if they get any nat ones, then disastrous consequences. So that both a six doesn't really matter. They both miss. And an eight, which also misses. Uh, for my second action, since casting Molten Orb was my first action. You got to roll damage, dude. Two of the first pikemen hit. What do they deal for damage? A D12, they're using pipes. A three and a, a seven. Three and a seven. Okay, thank you. For my second action, um, uh, can I use knowledge monster, um, again to identify exactly? What these weevil looking things are capable of. Um, I'm gonna say no now because they're gonna be out of your line of sight with where they're at. Like a straight line from you to him is got wall and other critters in front of it. Okay. Um can I cast a second molten orb over here? Um five, ten, fifteen, twenty, twenty-five. Yeah, you can. I wanna Maybe. create a second molten orb. To force the enemies to make a decision. <laughs> I mean, I was hoping to kind of keep the centipedes away, make make them backtrack. Now I'm worried that they're just gonna march all over the ballistas. Really but... don't want to draw another circle. I effing hate you. I mean, strategically, it just feels like it makes sense, you know. Strategically, I still hate you. Um, drown this, drown the battlefield in fire, you know. Oh, sweet. Thank you, Bork. You're welcome. Uh, so I need to roll three reflex for them, two for them, and one for him. So let's do the centipede first. Reflex seven. It, it was um, hard for me to do it. 
He gets hit. He does not. So this guy is going to scurry up a bit more. Bam. Um, and he gets hit. Okay, four. Why is it so much easier for you to draw the damn circles? Thanks, Tristella. Uh, you're welcome. I, mean, like, I don't know what to do. I, did, I didn't... I was trying to hurt them, not help them. I don't know why they're getting better at fighting when they get hit. They didn't get hit. They ran away. And this guy's reflex is six. Wait, so if they uh, succeeded in a reflex save, they moved? Oh, yeah. They moved out of the orb. Oh, okay. They just climb up on over the trench because they're scared enough of the fire. Wouldn't you be? Um, so, got I'd damage. Also be ex I'd also be exhausted the next round. Huh? Roll. <laughs> You're not getting any freebies. <laughs> I'm, I'm just going to call you Mr. Freebie from now on because you literally constantly try to get freebies. Yes, anyway, roll damage. You hit the four that are still in there. So, roll damage and it'll take it away from all four of them. I am shameless, by the way. I'm not sorry. Okay, I'm just going to take the first damage, the four, from everybody. Okay. And you are shameless. I'm not sorry. Okay, Sarah, what do you want to do? Go back in time and go before Drusilla. <laughs> nice try. <laughs> Look, I wasn't trying to help them. He only really moved three of them. Yeah, but he moved one in a direct path of where I was going to go. Oh. <laughs> well, <laughs> how about I put it on the other side? Will that help? No, oh, it was you the get funny things when they're not asked for. But when I'm very oh, direct, yeah. you deny them. Yeah, it was very nice inside. I had a clear running path right between the two sets of ants, and because of his thing, now the ants are my way. Oh, sorry. Sorry, not sorry. And by the way, We're you made an ellipse, not a circle. Oh, really? Really now? Are we going <laughs> to go there? <laughs> um, oh, I don't even have any of those. Um, oh, oh, what? I have an idea. That doesn't sound safe. Um, Um, I'm gonna start looking this up in case. I uh tell all the archers to take a step back, not like just so that they can still see and shoot off the wall, but I don't want them like in like hugging the wall because the fucking centipedes are coming at us. Why can I not move the... Why is it so hard to move shit that you draw? Because uh, he draws know. them well. They're made to last. No, I drew this, and I can't freaking move it. Because you didn't draw well. I don't know. It It's finagly. I want to... So we're on the walkway above the people below. I want to cast Create Water. Um, In the trench? See, I was thinking about that, but you're, they have, apparently they have such high movement that they went over the, they went past the trench already. Actually, they went down, across, and then up five feet. They only moved 30 feet in total. Oh, you said they were halfway up the wall. I he, said they have 10 more feet to go up the wall. So basically two wait, movement squares. These walls are wall. only 10 feet high. 15. Okay, so are they within the trench or not? Oh, they're on the wall. They're not on the bottom of the trench. 
So basically, you got a bunch of insects crawling up the side of the wall. They're not halfway up. They're just crawling up, but okay, they're not okay, okay. like on the I, bottom. I, I of should the specify either. the wall oh. of this is like fifteen feet high, which is still tiny for a wall. And then you have an extra five feet for the trench. How far up from the bot from the or how far down from the top of the wall are they? Ten, 10 feet. feet down. Yes. So they're not in so the trench. Five anymore. feet up. No. There's five feet. You're not accounting for then. If the wall is, is the wall 10 feet high or 15 feet high? The wall is 10 feet high. Oh. So they're the same level as the top of the trench. They're the same level as the spearmen. So the top of the trench. Yeah. So if I filled the trench full of water, would it affect them? Essentially, no. And I'm Okay, then I was going to go with Not sure. Here. I wouldn't honestly allow a simple create water spell to fill the entire trench either. Then what are we talking honest. about here? Hmm? I wasn't oh. going to fill the trench with water. Oh, I don't know what you were planning then. Well, you spoke up before I could finish. I did. Yes. Um. Okay, so I tell them all to back up a step, you know, the entire way is fine. And I cast create water on top of the wall. I'm going to let you do, like, um, a 10-feet section, so, like, a two-square section with create water. I'm allowed um, two gallon. I'm not saying, like, a foot high, even if it's, like, in half an uh, like, inch. So, like, what I'm thinking, what I'm thinking, mind you, so basically you're going to take your hands out, you're going to put them out, and you're going to create, like, a gallon out of each hand to drop down the wall. So I figure, like, if you're here, you could do, like, oh, I'll give you 15. So three squares. So, like, from this guy to this guy, if you really. Oh, I'm not it. dropping it down. Yeah, you're, you're pushing, you're making it walk that leak down the wall. Like, you're pouring no. it on top of the wall. Like, if no. I poured a gallon of milk on the wall. No, I'm pouring it in where we're walking. Oh, so you want it, like, here? I want to flood our feet. Oh. Uh, okay. Um. So, like, it's going to hit the ground where I'm standing on and spread across the water, across the top of the wall. Let's do... I'll go with, like, that for one turn. But if you want to do another turn doing that, then, um... We can make it bigger. I can work with that. I was going to say, does that seem reasonable to you? Two gallons, 10 by 10, so 100 feet. Or 25 square feet. Yeah, I can see that. Um, well, all right. Seven feet. Huh? Seven feet trying to crawl through water does sound like quite the clumsy sight. Um, Not I'm, really. They got pointy feet. I'm but gonna... I think I know what he's going for. Uh, okay, well, I think. I'm... Okay, well, I'm going to tell the other two archers to come by me. Oops, I drew a square on him. And this guy. Ah! Stop it! Stop it! Like that? Yeah. Um, I'm gonna have this guy move over towards his buddy. Um, in your sniper, by the way. I just yep. deleted the doc because I couldn't do it. I'm gonna have like this guy, the sniper attack the assassin. This sniper okay. attack the assassin. Okay. Um. Does. Okay, okay. So, further my question of the water thing. Does that count as. that You said that counts as one full turn, and that's in, with the bonus to my left hand? Shit, I forgot about the bonus to your left hand. Um. Uh, 
hands. Because I could see myself just using my left hand and directing everyone with my right hand in this turn. Well, if you want to just use your left hand for the water, I'll keep it the same. If you want to turn it into to create waters because of your left hand, I can make it a little bigger. Um, otherwise, oh, unless I have something wanna, that I can use from my right hand, you can know. Uh, basically, I'm saying if you use your left hand, well, I'll count it as one basic action. If you use both hands, I'll count it as two basic actions. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, um, if you want to use just your left hand to do it, then I'll leave it as it is. If you want to use both of your basic actions or both hands. I'll make the water bigger. But if you don't want to do that, you're allowed one more basic action. Um, no, I'll, I'll use both hands. Okay. So I'll extend it out another five feet on each side there you go all right uh and then yeah i'll have my i'll have them focus their attacks on the bigger stuff so like the snipers the will attack the big ants or the assassins and then the regular ones will attack the normal ants okay so roll 2d20, they're farther away, so just 2d20 for your snipers, and then 3d20 for your regulars. Uh, then that one obviously misses. The 14 misses as well. Don't uh, forget the ballistas. The 15 hits, though. So we'll say this guy, since it's your second regular archer, so he can pick either this ant or this ant. And the right. they're not manning the ballistas right now, so he's not using the ballistas right now. Wait, so my archers are in charge of the ballistas? I, yeah, I stated that in the beginning. You have to... Uh, I, I did ask you I, to repeat what we all had, but... Oh, I must have missed that. I apologize. In order to use the ballistas, you have to man them with an archer. Alright. Um. Okay, so roll damage for one of them. Yeah. Six damage. Uh, which one are you attacking, left or right? The right one. And you use both actions. You use both actions. So we're on to our guys. Uh, Okie dokie, Smokey. Eichmann, attack! The attack. They missed. Uh, um, okay, so with that, with this movement turn, these will make it up here. Uh, I'm going to leave this guy in the trench just because I don't want to mix their spots, but basically he's underneath the ballista. This guy. Um, same with, this, same with this guy. He's going to be under this ballista. This guy is already up here, so he's going to go there. Here. And here. Oh, shit. Um, roll one more damage for your orbs, because they don't go out until the start of your next turn. So everything that was in the orb is going to take damage. Okay, it says one, two, three, four, five. Just roll one. I will take it from everybody who had damage. One. Hmm. Everybody takes one damage. RN Jesus does not love me. You know, in the last yeah. five rolls, we've rolled four ones. Or in the last like <laughs> five like lines of rolls. <laughs> We must have said something. Like, it must be because we're always like dissing RN Jesus. We're pretty much blasphemous. He hates us. I love RN. 
RNG guy. It's not real die. If there's real die, then during the boss fight, they would get superpowers. Okay, so on your next turn, these are basically going to be gone. Yeah, they got, like, one round, and then, like, they have, like, another round, kind of, and then they fade away. I'm just going to move Dan's, because his is actually clickable and movable, whereas mine apparently sucks balls and doesn't want to do anything but stay in one spot. There's basically a 2d6 to anything that doesn't pass a reflex check. I got nothing. I'm, I mean, I'll take it. Okay, uh, let's put these guys back. Okay, so out of all of that, I've got four rolls against Archers and Sarah. So these are going to go in order from left to right. That up. So a twelve, a nat one, or they thirteen nat one, fifteen, and a twelve. Yeah, they all miss. Uh, then I've got these three. I say, if if they're hitting my archers with a thirteen, you're pulling some shady SDM shit. <laughs> I have the stats for everything. All of your characters have five hit points and ten AC. A 11, <laughs> 9, and the 18 will actually hit this guy. Uh, roll a d20 plus 3 for one pikeman, Owen. Uh, roll a what? A d20 plus 3. 8. 6 plus 1. Uh, he is poisoned. Yeah, that happen eventually. That's a lot of centipedes. And he takes 10 damage. Oh my god. So, on his ne for his next four turns, he will take 1d4 damage. Um, each turn, he gets a chance to roll and save himself. So, on your next turn, I will have you roll again for him. And then this centipede is going to attack him. A unnat uh, 24. That definitely hits. Roll a d20 plus 3 as well. Fork. Oh. With the nat 1. Also an 8. This is poisoned as well. Um, it also takes 4 damage. Okay. Uh, now the ants are going to move. And they're going to settle in at the bottom of the trench. Give me Starship Troopers flashbacks over here. And the Assassin Bucks are going to move in. And they're also going to settle on the bottom of the trench. Oh, no. And as <laughs> they all reach that point... Oh no. <laughs> Waiting for the second wave to roll up like immediately. Bam. That did not bam. Why did that not bam? Nothing happened. I know, it didn't bam. It was supposed to bam. Bam. Bob rolls back and reveals that. All I see are, oh my god, a second wave rolled up immediately? You're not there yet, but yeah, there's a second wave now. God damn me and my shitty fucking mouth. I was being sarcastic. Anyway, it is now your guys' turn, so we'll keep with how we had it before. Drusilla, you are up. You and your pikemen are up. Um, have all of my pikemen strike 
the ones in front of them, the centipede hordes. 3D20. Feels, yeah, it feels weird attacking a horde of centipedes, but like, like you know, what else are you supposed to do? The 9 misses, but the 17 and the 18 hit. So right. roll damage, 2d12. Eleven seven. Um, are you gonna have these other yeah, two? Yeah, they're, they're adjacent. Advantage? So, yeah, I'm gonna have them strike as well. They don't have to roll at disadvantage since they're adjacent, right? No, these guys are above you. You can roll after these guys. Uh, so basically, they'd be trying to hit this guy and this guy, who are technically sharing the square with this guy and this guy. Yeah, these centipedes are good at getting around. Um, yeah, I'll have them roll at disadvantage to the guys in front. I'll roll 2d20 for each of them. A nat one. A nat on the one. Tight. And next. A nat Another one. nat one. Oh, oh my RNG god. RNG really, really does not like me. It really does not like me. That's like your eighth one today. So as they're trying to like stab down and hit the centipedes that are under these guys' feet, they, uh, they nick. But not much. Just the greaves of each of their character. So they take a little bit of damage. They're probably freaked out seeing this massive centipede just scale the walls. Like they're within not the massive. First few they're rounds. like just pretty big bugs. I said massive. Oh, okay. Um, roll a d4 as well for this guy who is poisoned. Oh, first roll a d20 plus three. Seventeen. Manages to shake it off before he takes any damage from the poison. Um, Sarah, well, now it's your specific turn. What do you wish to do? Um, so, starting off, bonus action. Uh, I see the fog kind of falling back a little further. Um, I want to bonus action, use my animal focus to, uh, what is it, the tiger... Plus two to agility. Um. So is this like a standard wall where you have like the ledges on the front and the back, holding in right it's on but, the front, but not the back. Oh, so the water's kind of just flowing out the back. Well, kind of, but kind of not. There's not a lot of water on the ground yet either. It's more like just a puddle, so it's not like it's really flowing right now. It's, All right. it's 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 also not like a solid wall like you'd expect nowadays. Cobblestone, so there's water in the cracks and around the stones. And... Well, fuck it. I'll change my plan. I'm going to cast two volcanic storms. Okay. Um, oh. I can bring your circle back down. I knew it was a good reason to save that circle. I'll also just point out, I skipped my turn, but... Let's, no, let's it's not skip sub. So I'll come back to you. Okay. Here's one circle. Is that right? Twenty foot radius. One, two, three, one, two, three. That's the wrong size. It's a thirty foot radius. This is the circle you drew for him. Oh, no, that's not the one I want. Oh, there. 20 foot radius. One, two, one, two. Actually, it could go down a little bit more, but I'll give it to you. That's fine. No, that's that's still still not wrong. Or that's still wrong. What's it supposed to be? A 20 foot radius. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Uh, that. I like that. Hey, isn't right. radius like you go from the middle? So 
this just I'm just saying here. So basically, like the middle part here, ten feet up and ten feet down equals a twenty foot radius. That's a You're twenty foot diameter. diameter. That's diameter. Twenty oh. foot a radius is from the middle to the point uh, outside. So one, okay. two, three, four. One, two, three. Uh, that's a little big. Middle, which would be here. One, two, three, four. One, two. That looks three, about right four. to me. One, two, three. One, two, three. Yeah. Okay. I like the bigger one. Of course you do. <laughs> Well, you know, fine. I'll just draw a second one then. Try to get it right here. No. That's there. exactly right. Now I have three circles on my screen. Well, move your circle. It matches yours perfectly. Well, it was too high. I just have moon orbs all over the battlefield. No, it's your molten orb that fucked me up in the first place. All right. Yeah. So since, uh, I mean, I was going to do something else, but um, well, technically this isn't yet. It's going to go off the side. It was just as much a surprise to you as it was to me, if that helps. Okay. Um, Since I don't ha have ants or molten orbs in my way, I'm going to... Uh, uh, place down a couple health potions at my feet. Accidentally drop them, but don't let them break. And I want to sprint and jump to like here. So like, I hit the edge of the wall and jump off, landing. Hero style. Roll, ac roll uh, agility to see how well you do on a landing. A twelve. Uh, do a D four damage. That's out. I mean, I'll take that. Ankle roll. Yeah, basically, it wasn't a bad roll, but it wasn't a great roll. So you take three damage. Uh, yeah, as um, you're doing your jump to get to where you are. So the, you were here. So that's five, ten, fifteen, twenty, twenty-five feet. So you would still have a little bit of movement as well. Um, you jump and you land and you you do roll to diminish the amount of force you take but at the same point you um you kind of hit like a rock in your knee or something like that and it, it stinks a bit okay and then i want to cast volcanic storm right there do you know you're in the middle of your own volcanic storm correct did i stutter he gets a well, reflex check to get out of the way <laughs> i do um Works both ways, Kenny. Not saying it doesn't. I wasn't arguing. Okay. Uh, 2d6 bludgeoning, 1d6 fire. Minus 4 perception during and difficult terrain. Okay, so roll reflex. 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 Um, the ballistas are just going to take the hit, though, because ballistas can't move. They should be pretty tanky wooden things that are about to get hit by a bunch of fucking rocks. Anyway, so I have to draw one, two, three, four, okay. five, six, seven. You do not get out. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine of them. Well, technically, if we're going by the Pathfinder one, there is no reflex save. Eight, 20. You just want everybody to get hit in the face, including... Well, you're getting hit in the face anyway, so of course now you want everybody to get hit in the face. No, no, I'm, I'm, it's just, I, I looked it up because I was wondering what the reflex save was, and it says saving throw of none. Oh. Which is... I, I was wondering why I didn't write it down on my... Yeah, spell then sheet. just roll damage. Roll 2d6 budgeting damage, because I don't want to roll for fucking 36 fucking ants and shit anyway, so... 2d6... Bludgeoning damage towards everything in there. Inconvenience bonus. Basically. 
11 for uh, everyone. 11 for everybody. Now, if you want to have us roll whether we get caught on fire, that's up to you. Take the fire damage. Of course you would. <laughs> Make sure you take your damage, too. I already did. If you would check my character. I'm busy adjusting the other 20-something character. Well, that's not my problem. <laughs> we didn't put 100 units on the screen to manage. <laughs> <laughs> remember that donnie your campaign is next oh no yeah okay. donnie likes to keep it simple he just gives one or two super strong characters and, and then has us roll all, the, all everything one of his super strong characters and he tries to nerf me we'll see how well he nerfs me this time i'm just gonna merc everything in your campaign I, I just I, die. fine if you brought it up i'm just saying you gave me shit for sending eight bandits at the five of you or the four of you and then you send <laughs> fucking 30 animals at us and it's just the two of us it's insects and there's also like fucking 13 other guards with you uh, <laughs> they all count as two you know that <laughs> anyway uh drusilla you still have your basic actions to do uh, how far can I shoot my molten orbs? Can I get these guys with them? So help me fucking God. What? Would that ruin your plans too? Is is me actually trying to dish out damage, making things harder for you? There's how much already... shit at the wall that you could be attacking. I already said no anyway, so make a different idea. Okay, I'm just... I, there's not a lot I can do, so I'll just go up and try and swing at some shit. Here, move I mean, out throw, of the way, Pikeman. Throw the molten orbs at the wall. Like, you got how many cent, uh, centipedes? I'll be hitting the listas. Well, that's fine. I mean, like, sure, fine, I'll throw molten orbs at the know. wall. You can You're do whatever gonna... you want. I, I'm... I, everything I do makes everything worse, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> I'll throw molten orbs at the wall. And then they're all going to jump up on everybody's face and impregnate people with ant eggs or something. <laughs> anyway. Oh, orbs, fine. Oh, fuck my life. And actually, no, those other ones would have been fine because I still could have ran around them. It's just the other, the ones you did initially, my landing zone where the ants moved to was in my attack. They would have got attack of opportunity for just me landing there. Before there was a space, there was a gap there that I could have landed in. That that's why I was a little upset initially. I can't read your mind. That's why I said all I said is I should have went first. All right. Where so. do you want the orbs? Yeah, this is a good spot. I get quite right here or right here or right, right there, here. right last one, last position. This yes, one? that one. And for these one, kind of the same thing. I want to be able to hit this guy and this guy. You're also going to be nicking that pikeman if I put it there. If I, I put mean, it I, here. Yeah, sure. Hold on. I'm just clarifying. Stop jumping. Oh, my God. I can put it here, and you'll only hit bad guys in a ballista. Or I can put it here, and you'll hit bad guys, but you'll possibly nick your pikeman as well. Where do you want it? One to the right, or where it's at? Can't move it where the left one is? Left one's in a perfect spot. It doesn't... Left one's not hitting any pikemans, but it's getting the bad guys. Yes, I know, but that's a different setup. If I move it there, like I said, right here, one to the right, like I said, it hits these guys, but you missed this one. You missed this front one here, and you missed the pikeman, but it hit the other guys. Wait, so is this one not is this one hitting that pikeman, this guy? No. So why is this one different? Because if I move it just over. Right there, that's perfect. It's not hitting any pikeman, it's hitting all the bad guys inside. Well it was. 
still is. I'm just lining it up with the grid to make sure everything's even. Okay. Now I gotta roll reflex. Uh, 17 will dodge, miss, miss, dodge, miss, dodge, miss, miss. That's a lot of rolls. There's 10 centipede swarms in his shite. Uh, getting a headache just looking at that. Well, you're doing that. I'm actually going to go use the bathroom. Miss. Okay. Dodge. Oh, shit. Technically, these two, which I rolled for, aren't actually there. They're underneath the ore pikemen, so they don't get hit anyway. Oh. So, that's the 6 and the 12. This one hits. This one hits. This one dodges. This one hits. Okay, so roll damage. Oh, wait, I gotta roll for the ants. Two, four. Yeah, I'll roll a d6 right now anyways. Three. Twenty. So this guy. I'll do this guy just because he's close to the edge. He misses. Well, that makes sense anyway. This guy dodges. So this guy's dead. Wow, that Molten Orb takes a chunky amount of mana. I'm already down 40 mana points. Oh, well, it is a big AoE spell. Maybe I should just go out there swinging. I don't know. I just wish you guys would not bicker. I just got dead. Okay, damage has been dealt. So as you're uh, for this whole round, you get uh, you guys all command. You command your pikemen to stab. Their commands are archers to shoot, and then after they're done with their volleys and their attacks, Sarah and Drusilla somehow kind of mingle their thoughts and cast their big AOEs at the exact same time in the exact same spots. So you have fire raining down, beating on everything, beating on the train, and at the same point, in the middle of this big fiery doom, a molten orb just pops out of fucking grows in each storm. It's pretty much fiery hell for for a good six seconds, and then it is now the bad guy's turn. Next on strategy. Because these are still going on, they're going to stop here to avoid entering into the fire. Uh, roll damage again. Uh, Donnie, Forks only does damage once. Yours does damage twice. Five. That is true, but mine is difficult terrain. Yep, that's... I understand. Uh, this ballista is broken. Damn it. This ballista is broken. They are not tanky. I was wrong. You guys both hit them quite a bit. Hey, I hit them with falling ash. I'm not the one who lit them on fire. Uh, you hit them with falling rocks. Yeah, and ash. They made out of wood and metal. Like, I wasn't expecting them, the ones I hit the last. And then that'll make these go bye bye. This guy is here. These two are still technically there. This guy will climb up to here. This guy is going to go here. This guy will now. 
is going to attack the ballista because it's in his way and he is too big to share a spot with it. So, <laughs> plus 10. Oh no, that's damage. These ballistas are such a bad idea. Plus 10 to damage. No. Plus 10 to roll. I mean, he, he, he threw us giant in the first battle. Or the second one to like play us, and then it's like instead of a giant enemies, I'm just gonna flood you with mass amounts of enemies. That's exactly what I plan to do. D20 plus 10. Uh, 22. So, yeah, that definitely attacks. Which is our. Wait, did you just roll against a ballista? I did. You had a plus 10. Its AC it's... is 10. Hey, you know. I'm not going to knock the random number generator god. He may roll an at one. That's fair. 2p6 plus 6. 14 damage. This guy. But not Does assassin bugs get a plus 10? Yes, to their attack. That's why there's only two of them. And a plus 6 to their, their hit. Or mm -hmm. their damage. Oh, oh no. no. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, um, so this guy is going to attack this archer along with this centipede swarm, this centipede swarm. Man, your archers are in a lot of trouble. It's nothing the pikemen can do for them. They're on a wall. You can have these guys climb the wall. These four in the back. I guess I'll try that. I didn't think that was an option. How do you think the archers got up there? Magically? I thought they were just waiting there. They were, but they climbed up there. They didn't you know, just magically appear on the walls. I'm just so used to everything I want to do being hard and unreasonable that I didn't even think it was possible. You only make everything you want to do hard and unreasonable. I assumed it was a bad idea, and I thought it would be stupid to suggest it, so I didn't. Um, so only this guy manages to hit your archer of the centipede swarms. I haven't rolled for the assassin bug yet. So roll 1d20 plus 3, fork. What? Oh, I'm sorry, Bubba. Tell me you're up. Hang on. I'm distracted. Yeah, I'm distracted my dog. A 13. He manages barely, Ty goes to the ruler to avoid poison. Um, as well as this centipede bug manages to bite this archer, so another d20 plus three as well, please. He and that one fails, so he is poisoned. Wait, oh, yeah. how many nat ones have our side gotten today? I just got a nat one for damage, so. but he is poisoned now. Um. The other guy's poison to us to take damage. A D4. Or no, he's got to roll it to save first. So roll a D20 plus 3 to see if he saves. If he fails to save, then yes, he takes a D4. Nine. So, yeah. So this guy that you already have poison will take a D4. Alright. Oh, I have to roll it? I can if you want. I don't really care. D4. Oh, another net one. Another one. RNG is not very nice today. Okay, now the assassin bug is going to attack this archer. And he rolls in that one. See? It's always better to roll. And he misses. Um, these three are going to attack the front line. Uh, three, each, six. Damn it, I did it wrong again. A 17 hits, and that one misses, and 9 misses. So this guy is going to get striked. Uh, Donnie, 1d20 plus 3, please. Take 6 damage. 8. He is poisoned. You get poisoned. You get poisoned. You get poisoned. 
like got a poison line on his face. Um, the ants can't do anything. This ant can't do anything. Those guys already moved. So at that point, we will end the enemy turn and switch to you guys. Okay. Uh, I don't, I was thinking about Lord of the Rings, you know, Legolas and Gimli, like, competing for kills, but let's compete for net ones. <laughs> yeah, with the way, I was honestly expecting you guys to roll a bit better, because these guys don't have much health, but you guys have not been rolling well. <laughs> no, this has been a very bad set of rolls. I mean, when you um, roll it and you hit attack, and then you, your damage roll comes and you hit a one, you can't really do much with that. Yep, yep. Okay, so I want my pikeman to climb up and actually do something about all these centipedes. These four? Yeah. Uh, how do you want to do it? Two on each side, four to one side, three to one side. Be specific. Because I'm not doing it for you. I want these four to... Gosh, I forgot about the second wave. Two on each side. The second wave complicates things, because I would have taken one side, I would have sent four on one side. Um, yeah, I'll have these two take this side, and these two take this side. Um, I'm going to put this guy here, but again, I'm going to just state it that these two are now on the same square. It's going to be the same with this guy being on the same square with this guy. And this guy being on the same square as this guy. So roll 5d20 for your attack for your pikeman. And then you still have the other two that can roll at disadvantage if you choose. Also roll it. I'll do the d4. We'll roll a d20 plus 3. If he fails, he'll take... Uh, Three poison damage. He failed. Failure is on the menu tonight. It's a specialty. I might actually succeed in killing both of you this time. Okay, so miss, 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 and hit. So we're gonna go from left to right. So miss, 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 and hit. So roll a d12. Real reason we leave the capital. We got everybody killed and we were too ashamed to show back up to town. <laughs> hey, you know, anything's possible. Okay, so you killed that centipede swarm. Um, you now have your personal action. Um, now, I'm going to say this because for some reason you haven't thought of this. These three, as I have stated several times, are sharing the square with these three. So you can swing your sword at these three. Or at least at one of the three. I knew I could have made melee actions, but I was trying to think like strategically and be like smart. I don't know why. That never works out for me. I was trying to hit a bunch of shit with Molten Orb. Been pretty so good spent... last time, except for you also nuked your own Ballista. Yeah, I spent the last two rounds casting Molten Orb, so 40 mana in total. Like, just each action. Just, like, Molten Orb, Molten Orb. That's all I've been doing. And I thought, you know, that would probably be a better use of my time trying to hit, like, a mass of units and trying to, like, swing at, like, one or two every round. Clearly, that hasn't been working out. Thinking doesn't work out for me ever. But I thought I'd give it a shot. It wasn't too bad. You did actually manage to hit quite a few with each one. You just rolled shit damage for both your damage rolls. And they roll really good reflex checks. So Actually, only three have successfully dodged. Only three creatures. You hit like eight or nine of them. You just did one damage. Yeah. So like I knew I could swing. I was just trying to use a little bit of strategy. But now I'm gonna swing. Um so yeah, slash R. Hold on. I'm going to actually imbue with Shock and Grasp my sword. I'm going to probably try and maintain that for a while. Um, I'm going to use imbue weapon. 5 plus 10 is minus 15. Alright, 
for my first action, I'm going to swing at one of each. So there's one here and one here, right? There's three. All three are full. Okay. So since my first action was two swings, my second action is two swings. Mm -hmm. I'm going to swing my imbued weapon at the one right in front of me right here, and then this one right here. Okay. You get two swings on each, so roll 2d20 for each. 2d20 plus 4. Slash. Four. Eighteen hit. Eighteen does indeed hit. The seven does not. Okay, so I hit one of them. The well, second you hit, target. You hit the first guy once. Now roll two d twenty for your second guy. So like you hit the one in front of you once. Now you hit oh. the one on your right once as well. Okay, I mean, I know I'm usually Mr. Freebie, but I thought my first action was me imbuing my weapon. My second action was me swinging twice. Oh, shit. Yeah, you're right. Um, I misunderstood you. Um, so, basically, when you swing twice, um, it's not that you can swing at two targets. You can swing at one target twice. Oh, okay. So, yeah. I, I, I misunderstood what you were saying. So you, you damage him, but you hit him once, but you have your weapon imbued with shocking drafts. So roll damage and see if he managed to murk him or not. Okay, yeah. I, I like to take what I can get, but I don't like to take more than I think I can I deserve. Okay, it, so I deal. It depends on what kind of mood you're in. Slash R1D8 plus 4. That's my sword damage. My shock and grasp damage is 3d6. Dead, even if you manage to roll in that one for all three of your d6. <laughs> okay, so after seeing this horde of centipedes massed upon us, I am just relishing this one kill as I strike like this, this small batch of centipedes, just laughing maniacally. It's what you get! This is what you get! Then I look up and see if there's like way more than this. I'm just like, no. Hey, Sarah, you and your archers are up. Uh, I mean, I have to, my archers are going to go ham at swinging swords. Like, they're going to pick one and just start going. Hey, uh, first roll 2d20 plus 3 to see if the poison guys get out of it. And 21 and a nat 1. Guy gets out of it, but the other guy takes a d4. Oh, how'd you do that? No, I can't turn it up, buddy. I have, otherwise the guys can hear it. Hey, nat one in damage. You deleted that square so fast, I didn't even notice. That's because I was ready for it. Okay, so you're going to have your archers attack with swords. I'll give you two swings. So roll 2d20 for each of them. So a total of 10d20 or 2d25 times. Any modifiers to them? No, no modifiers for your swords for your archers. All right, nice. so Not the first bad. one is a nat one and a ten. He does not hit. The, the second, second one is a fourteen and a three. He hits once. Um, you can pick either the guy in front of him or the guy to the right. Guy in front of him. Yeah. Okay. The sniper. No, that was the sniper. This guy. He's just honed in. He rolled a 13 and a nat 20. The 13 does not hit, but the nat 20 is a crit for the but, roll. So the 13 hit. hit before. No. Uh, a 14 hit. Oh, no, it's a 13 with the poison thing. Okay, then this guy rolls a 5 and a 12. So arch number Misses. 4. Wait, what? Misses. Oh. Uh, and then arch number 5. Is a sixteen and a seven, so it's once. So you get three damage rolls. One is a crit roll. Uh, D eight or D six? D eight for a regular uh, sword. So the uh, guy is a two. 
Yeah, a two, then a six for archer number two. Um, is archer, archer number is is the crit? Where is he attacking in front? Yeah. Okay. Well, then oh, archer number dead. five does two damage. Minus two. Okay. Um. Well, that's it for your archer's turn. Now it is your turn. All right. Uh, bonus action. Um. Don't have a turn. I'm gonna summon my tiger in front of me. Um. Oh no 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 no! They always mess that up. All right. So I'm gonna jump on my tiger's back. Is it is a large animal? Yep, it turned into a large animal a while ago. Yeah. Um, and I want to sprint this way. And I want to jump over this line of centipedes. First, the the one you're jumping over. Well, because there's centipedes, uh, I'll do it like this. Roll agility to see if you manage to jump over. If you manage to jump over, I won't do anything because there's centipedes and they're low to the ground. If you don't manage to jump over, they'll get an attack of opportunity. From all three that are in this row right here. Okay. That. Is, uh, yep. Okay. Unnet a dirty twenty. So you manage. You you jump over easily. Um, okay, so it they have like he's full out running, so he's at a movement a speed of forty, so that's eighty. Eighty minus the difficult terrain in the first five, so I'd say seventy. Yeah, oh, no, sixty. So no, I'll go with seventy. Okay, seventy is fine because well, you're right on the edge of the difficult terrain, so I'll go with seventy. Uh he jumps over, and I want to do like cool superhero, like cool style. Runs up this way, and as that's as we're going by, I'm gonna cast uh vol dual volcanic storms. So basically, you want to move these up here, like that. Uh, well, those should stay because that you should copy them up there because Hold on. that yeah I I I couldn't copy before. terrain yeah it's difficult terrain for the remainder no because it was over the ballista so it was right there uh yeah just and a little bit to the left but yeah you got it right there okay uh roll damage um oh 2d6 plus a d4 correction mm. I only this is you this was turned down to a one level spell. So it's only difficult terrain for the duration, which is one turn. No, we didn't we agree that the difficult terrain would stick. Oh, okay. Uh only the raining fire is one turn. As you level it up, the raining fire would go another turn. Okay. And the minus four to perception is only the one turn. But the terrain stick. Yeah, in the top right sphere, this one mm -hmm. could is gotta move over a little bit. To the right. Um. To the right. Yeah. Okay, so two D twenty. Why are you rolling D twenty? Two D six. Yeah. Two D six. I, I clicked off the page. Two D twenty. Two D six and a D four. Oh, that says D six fire. Does it? You rolled a d4 last time. It does say d6. So two d, so three d6 ultimately. <laughs> Give him a d8 as a freebie, a <laughs> makeup round. A so twelve, no. <laughs> oh yeah, because because nor because the normal spell is three d6 bludgeoning and two d6 fire. Yeah. So we kept it separate because then we level it up. Mm-hmm. You could pick and choose which ones you wanted to level. 
Okay. Well, you lucked out because you took two numbers out of the pool. Okay. Well, let's do some dumb with all this shenanigans. And, and, and to everyone on the wall, I disappear into the fog. For that, are you planning on stopping as soon as you hit the fog, or are you going to try to continue to run through it? Oh, I'm looking for who I told you I was looking for. Okay, so, so I'm continuing. Slow down and slow down and caution. Stop the sprint at least. No. Okay. Uh, uh I'm perception. going full board. Oh boy. Um, oh boy. Perception. That's wisdom, right? Perception is charisma in my game because I am weird, and I think charisma deserves the use. I don't think we have a wisdom stat, anyways. No, we it's don't. Just one intelligence. No, I I ask him because then I can tell him it's stupid that it's charisma, and I can tell you I don't care. All right, so a fifteen for my tiger. Uh, one, and then that one for me. I'm relying on my tiger here. <laughs> so your tiger kind of has a better sense than you do. But uh, you can't see shite. So um, I'm not going to say you get as far as you want to go. But I'll move you a bit to right here. You can't see where I'm moving you because I'm just moving you. But you're there now. <sighs> You're looking around through the fog and you don't really see anything. Like I said, you rolled a you rolled a nat one for your perception, so you don't really see shite. Uh yeah, I mean I, like I said, I'm just relying on my tiger to get me through the first yep. part because Yeah, I I gotcha, I gotcha. I know where I'm going with it. Um You're lucky because your tiger stopped you from basically running into a couple trees. Uh almost like headlong. So okay, that's so what the he's damage... there for. He he's making sure we go straight, and I'm telling him which direction we need to head next. <laughs> the damage is done, so now they have our terrain. So if I they can only move that far. Um, then I gotta roll my attacks. One, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ah, oh, I fucked it up again. I don't know why I keep putting the space between the number I want to roll and the D20. Well, I've been doing something like that all night too. I've been having to like re-roll like once every turn, just because miss, invalid. Miss. miss. Yep, four miss, five hit. That's a lot of twenties. Ten of them. Six crits. Seven misses. So okay, so five hits. So he's hitting this guy. So roll one d twenty plus three. Donnie. D20 plus three. Guy takes two damage. Yeah, bud. He is poisoned. Card is called Donnie Danger. Poisoned. That's me. Donnie Danger. Donnie. So this guy crits. That guy's already poisoned, so it doesn't matter. He hits. For eight damage. This guy misses. This guy hits. Roll another D twenty plus three, please. Donnie. Twenty. Oh. He does. Nat twenty. He is not poisoned, but he takes five damage. From poison. And <laughs> no, die. <laughs> I'm getting bit, but anyway. <laughs> ah, shit, what is that? Anyway, uh, okay, so go back up. This guy misses, but this guy hits. So 
So this guy's already poisoned. So don't have to worry about poison. He take four damage. Okay, this assassin bug is going to strike at this thing. At least the ballistas are creating a distraction. Is dead. Die, ballista. And then this big ant, giant ant, is going to strike at this guy. It's the first time the giant ants have gotten to attack. Uh, their attack is plus four. Oh no. What a shame. <laughs> Only plus four? Uh, 21. And now they also get to grab because they're attacking with big grabby pinchers. Let's see what grab does. <laughs> God, I can't wait for my campaign again. This is, this is not, Are you gonna not looking me? good. See, the funny thing is, Katie already knows my plan. That I already set an action before this all happened. You had something planned? Yeah. I mean, it wasn't my... It wasn't necessarily me that the reason why we changed. I just... You said you wanted to change. I mean, I, I could have kept going. You well, said you wanted to change. I did want to change, but I could have kept going. I, I'm just okay. surprised you had something planned. Either way. If you would have said, no, I'm not ready, or like, I need more time, I could have kept going for a couple, for a while. But anyways. Tell me that now. Uh, the damage. I did all summer up through like, November. It was just, I loved, I loved. Very much. Yeah, that guy takes nine damage, and... Roll a d20 plus 3 for me. Donnie. On it. This is a slow typer. 12. You fail to beat his, so you are grappled. Uh, basically, you're in between the pincers of the giant ant, and in order to make any sort of action next turn, you need to roll another d20 plus three and see if you can get yourself out me or a pikeman the pikeman does he uh, also have the centipede in his jaws there's no centipede here oh, okay. this dance attack this pikeman okay uh this guy is going to have to be archer again and he got a nat 20 i'm guessing you're Poor Archer is going to die. I mean, his name is... It is called an assassin ant. Now, I'm pretty sure that Archer's name is Red Shirt. Uh, so, yeah. Super dead. He only did 12 damage. It doubled the roll. It's an F20. Oh. Yeah. Super dead. He only did 18 damage. <laughs> Anyway, that a guy's flesh wound. Uh, these guys have already moved, so yeah, it's on to you guys. Donnie, make 2d20 plus 3 for me. Sarah, make 1d20 plus 3 for me. Her and Jesus, at it again. You managed to tie, so yours is gone. I rolled a 13. Yep. I got two fives. Ah! That's not what I wanted to delete. Hey. The other one worked out so well. Yeah, for, for those ones, you might as well just move the archer and then grab the order. Pretty sure my roll average is like six or seven. If we rounded up my history of rolls. You it's are. The way we could calculate that. You RNG just hates you. Uh wow. RNG definitely hates you. This guy's dead. And this guy loses more health. That guy's there. 
Okay. Your guys' turn. Oh, I'm gonna swing swing at uh one guy and then swing at another. So two and two. Okay. Uh two to twenty plus four. So there's two centipedes or centipedes on the bottom floor. They're each getting four hits to them, right? One's getting two hits and another's getting two hits. But then they're oh. each getting two from each pikeman, right? Or uh, one from each of the pikemen that are bordering it? They, the two, this guy and this guy, were rolling at disadvantage as long as there was another guy there. Oh, what about the pikemen who climbed the uh, wall? Those no. guys are attacking these two. Oh, I'm talking like, okay, so like, I always understand like the disadvantage if they're trying to attack past, but if they're sharing the same square. Well, the, they were actually sharing the same square. Be that's why they had the disadvantage because they were sharing a square, so they were trying to attack around the person's foot. I if they, they were attacking they were past, I wouldn't have had them do the disadvantage. Okay, but either way, the all four of your pikemen are attacking those two centipedes, right? They were, yes. Okay. They have been every turn. I I just want to make sure. Yeah, they just haven't been hitting very well. Um. So which ones are you attacking, Donnie? Okay. Uh okay, so there's one right here, right? Yep. There's one on this guy, right? Yep. Yeah, so I'm gonna swing over here and I'm gonna swing over here. Okay. My first set of swings. The uh, sixteen hits, the twelve does not. Or the thirteen does not. Plus three. I'm just going to do damage before I proceed with my second set. Five damage on the swing. And then slash R. Three, D, six. And 12 damage with the shock and grasp. Okay, and then my second set of swings. Slash R. Three, D, three. Plus four. Assuming the first one hits, I assume. Six does, six does not. Then shock and grasp. Don't worry about it, it's dead. Did my first target die? No. He's still alive, otherwise I would have deleted him. Uh Damn. now roll for your pikeman. Okay. How many? One, two, three, four, five, six, D twenty. That's a six. He, yeah, he didn't roll 60 20. He rolled a 6. None of those hit. None of them hit. Nope. <laughs> you know what? Since you're melee combat, I probably should have done this earlier, but I'll give you a plus 2, which means at least one hits. So going from left to right, it would be this guy hits this guy. How much damage? D12. One damage. Thanks for that. I needed that freebie. Helped you out. Okay, Sarah, uh, you're I, up. Uh, yeah, I'm trying to sense and track and find with like the Do person who, first. Do oh, you got first. Uh, they're attacking the people next to them. Okay. Um. So I. This guy is covered by the pikemen, so I'd go one, two, three, four. Oh, no modifier, right? Oh, not for their melee swings. They all miss with a four, five, six, and three. Why? So archers, Why I got a so short bad? straight though. Can I cut for something? <laughs> we are uh, terrible at this game. Your archers are all panicking. They're, they were they chose to be archers because they thought they'd be on the walls shooting arrows down, but these bugs are climbing the walls with ease. They're seeing people dying. They are not in a good situation. So they're. 
they're kind of swinging wildly, more so scraping the cobblestones rather than actually hitting the bugs that are around their feet. We've been averaging at a five at best this entire round out of 20. <laughs> it's not been good. Anyway, um, now it's your physical turn. What do you wish to do? Uh, I want to... I'm going to just keep on in a run because I don't know how big this fog is because we could, haven't really been able to see depth uh, from the city. Perception again. Uh, okay. Um, a 14. And then like halfway through this turn, so like 40 feet, I want to call out to the person I'm looking for. So you're running. Um, you attack your manager just to dodge another tree, barely. Uh, and you dodge another one. Oh, but did I roll it, perception it, for my tiger too? I figured it was both. It is uh, not. See, he has a minus two. And he rolls better perception than I do, even though I have a plus one. Because he rolled a 17. Oh. So That's he does twice. manage to dodge the second tree, but you kind of miss a low-hanging branch on the second tree, and it kind of knocks you. It doesn't hurt you, but it does knock you down to the ground at that 40-foot mark you were talking about. And you hit the ground, and you're kind of like, where are you? As you're on the ground, and your tiger stops and starts to circle around you, you know, being protective, kind of like growling and jazz. Yeah. And um, you hear a low chuckle, but um, no resounding answer. Just kind of like a low chuckle at your antics as you run through the black smog of doom. Yeah, cheap, but okay. And then it'll be the bug's turn, so I got a ton of rolling to do. Eight, nine. Miss, miss, hit, 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 miss, 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 hit, hit. Four, five, six. That's a lot of sixes. Wait, they hit nine out of. Or six out of nine of them? Yep. Jesus. So this guy hits this guy for minus two. Oh, yeah, the plus six to hit. That would do it. Yep, this guy hits this guy for minus one. This guy hits this guy for minus six. This guy takes three 
this guy take two. Just want to be like, pack it up, boys. Let the pillaging continue. You know, lay out your bread on the streets, your expensive watches. <laughs> okay, so I need Drusera to roll two d20 plus three. Drusilla, you need to roll one, two, three d20 plus three. I got That's... decent rolls this time. Well, you uh -huh. need to roll one more. Nine and a 22. This guy is poisoned. Decent roll again. Yeah, and your other guy succeeds. The RNG succeeds, got succeeds, it. Succeeds. Okay, so all your guys succeed. And uh, now it's time for the ant. To the attack. RNG gods were merely testing our faith. Well, we failed up until this point. Yeah, that's this true. Guy is still grappled. So he gets to roll attack at advantage. Twelve misses. This guy advances and attacks. And this poor archer is dead because it's only got four life, and that's not even the size of its modifier. Bye bye. And then this guy advances and attacks. Eighteen hits. Four fifteen damage, and this guy is dead. Uh. What are you going to do with that pool of water you made? I don't know. That's a spur of the moment decision because there's a giant orb that pushed an ant in my way. Not my plan. Again, I, I was thinking about sparking it, but then Two, after I placed three. it down, I found out that uh, the wall is just a pile of dirt. I was hoping it would make them back up, not approach. Sorry. Oh, no, I, I was trying to fill, like, the wall spot with water and then spark it, but then after the fact that I put the water there, then I found out there was no front and back to the top of the wall. It was just a front. Hello? I'm just watching this second wave move in and being completely not ready for this. Just making adjustments right now. Oh. No, I, I answered your question. You didn't respond at all, so I got confused. Oh, anyway. sorry. I was busy shitting my oh, he, he was talking to me, and I understand. I just really didn't have anything to say. I, just, I kind of figured that's what you were planning, but at the same point, I didn't know because you and your archers were standing in the middle of it as well. And I was like, that just seems like a suicidal idea. Yeah. Oh, then you also said like, "Oh, it's um, not really going to affect them much because they're barely going to be in it." I'm like, "Well, okay, well, I'm I'll, I'll just leave this turn anyway, or next turn anyways." Priscilla, you and your pikemen are up. But uh, no, it was it. it was initially I was going to make the water go so that when the centipedes, because they're fucking tiny, they have to go through the water and then they drown. And then you said, no, that wasn't an option, pretty much, by talking to Donnie. And then I'm like, okay, maybe I'll spark it. And then I'm like, yeah, actually, the ants move forward, so I'll jump over everything. Gotcha. My frontline archers, the ones standing on this drawbridge, whatever this... Sure, those are pikemen, but yes. And strike the remaining centipedes that are pretty much encroaching upon their territory. So how many is that? There's only one centipede left in your area. In okay, that well, small little thing right here. I'm going to have this guy, these guys strike at that guy. Try and clear that out. 2d20. Uh, hold on, let me roll that again. Roll the d2, d20. I didn't know that was possible. You one of those hit? Uh, The 15 does. Don't be a one. 11 damage. It's dead. 
Okay, and yeah, I'm pretty sure almost everything's weakened because it got most of them got hit by like the volcanic storm or something. Yeah, yeah, not by much. Molten Orb hasn't really been an effective strategy, so I'm hesitant to try second, it again. The second wave is um is um more damage than the first wave was. Okay, uh, I'm well, going to use... Can I maintain my imbuement and then still use both my actions to use Molten Orb? Um, no. Because imbuing is a concentration spell. So if you go to cast another spell while concentrating on your imbuing, the imbuing would fail. It's like you're constantly channeling your mana through your hand into your sword to keep it sparking electricity since you're using Shock and Grasp right now. So if you change the path of your mana to now shoot out molten orbs, well, you're no longer channeling that into your sword. Okay, uh, so uh, what I want to happen is for this pikeman to stand over here, if he can, I'm going to try and... Defend the front line with these two pikemen and have these other two pikemen go out onto the lines to assist. Under the roofs? Yeah. Okay, so it's so. just going to be me and these two holding the line. These guys up on the roofs need assistance, but I can't move because all these guys are coming. Otherwise, I would go up there too. Um, so yeah, I want my pikemen to assist on the roofs. And I'm going to create a Molten Orb, basically centralized, so hopefully I can hit both these Assassin Bugs and a bunch of these Ants and a bunch of these Centipedes. Cool. I'm going to try and do an Intimidate check if possible. Uh, I'm maintaining an Abutment, using an action. And then trying to intimidate on the same turn. I know it's a lot to try, but I don't want them dodging out the sides and then like pincering from the edge of the walls like the last horde did. Something like that? Yeah. Okay. Okay, so. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Twenty. So, hit, hit, dodge. Here. So he'll be basically jumping into the trench to dodge. Hit, net twenty, dodge. He's also jumping in the trench. Did they get any fall damage from making that leap? Well, they're climbing down the wall. Okay. They're bugs. And dodge. This guy doesn't have to go as far because he's right there. So he'll dodge to right there. So those four. Now the ants. Wow, another net 20. Hit Lucky ball. you. Look at you go. This guy will go here. This guy will go here, this guy will go here, and this guy is, what is their reflex, plus six. Let's say these guys are trap. actually, you know what, hold on a second. Up. I wanted to roll at disadvantage because they are in shitty terrain. And I forgot to do so. So I will roll again and take the lowest. Oh, thank you. G R and Jesus. <laughs> well, who knows? It might not be that bad. Is the that nat 20 person's gonna get another nat 20? Yeah, they're all just gonna roll nat 20s on these rerolls. 
Okay, so either way, first guy takes an eight plus seven, so not enough. And then a four, and then a six, so not enough. The eleven plus seven is still enough, so this guy still gets out. So it's one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Shit. This guy will. What's the spell called? Out. Molten Orb. Molten Orb. He creates a fiery orb of doom. The 20 turns into a 14, which is still enough to get out, but it's not a net 20 out. 12, 17, 12 is still enough to get out. Supposed to be my big crowd control move. And 16 is still enough to get out. You really so, modified this spell. I did. I expected him to use it a lot more than he does as well, but he doesn't really use it very often. No, I well, was hoping really he lot. would. I was hoping he would use it and level it up, and we would turn it into something fucking fantastopotamus. But all he ever uses is imbue weapon and shock and grass. Really? I mean, how many opportunities have you given me to actually use this in like an open space? One fifteen. Well, at least the nat twenty doesn't get out, but the. 15 still manages the... Well, he still manages to get out, but it's not a net 20 out. Don't, and, don't, don't uh, blame me. This guy does. I... This guy does. Pretty much uses every chance I get on an open field. But you don't. I used this shit a butt-ton last raid. I'm using it a butt-ton this raid. You used it, like, twice last raid. Yeah, and it didn't work out. At all. And... So eight twelve and eight thirteen. So yeah. Okay, so roll damage. Hmm. Okay. One. This is actually really starting to hurt. <laughs> Sorry, man. I do not control R and Jesus. I even gave you disadvantage because Sarah set up bad terrain. Is there any intelligence modifier that I can add to this? Damage? No. No. Maybe difficulty to us. No, never mind. It's just it's just not a move I should ever use again. Only if it only if See, this is, this is why he never levels it up. Because he has bad rolls and then hates it and never uses it ever so again. You That's could, right. You you could use your intelligence if you were sorcerer. What? You could use your intelligence if you were sorcerer. What do you mean? Uh, not for damage, but for hits. Or whatever it is. Uh, I was just I saying, I was what? just saying sorcerer, their intelligence is their uh, class skill or class ability modifier. Oh, yeah, I don't know anything about that. I'm a Magus. I don't know if that there's anything like that for me. Well, all um, Pathfinder classes has a class ability modifier. It's it's the it's the ability modifier that is mostly. It doesn't affect your like fortitude reflex or waste or uh, constitution. No, um, what's the third save? Will save, but like it affects anything that rolling that for your class skills or whatever. Pretty sure all my class skill for is single target damage, imbue weapon. I'm pretty sure that's where my uh magus thing lies. Yeah, yours is a lot to do with the D and D way. It was a lot to do with utilizing both magic and sword and ultimately using magic through your sword as it becomes an entity of its own. Um, Sarah, you're up. What do you want your archers to do, and what do you want to do? Um. I mean, I have two archers left. My mole norm has leveled up, by the way. Not that. 
Uh, we can talk about it later and figure out what we will do for the level. You grumpy bastard. <laughs> I hate when you get like this, because you only ever get grumpy when you're losing. And you make it so much harder to do stuff, because now you're just super grumpy, and it makes me want to let you win just so you stop being a grumpy dick. Be fine with that outcome. Fuck you. Go ahead. I'm going to attack this one. Okay. And he, he this guy's been on a... He's been on a tear, even though he only has like 20 max HP. But he's going to attack that one. Yeah, no, both miss. Uh, seven and that one. Yeah, I don't think I hit. As for you, you're going to keep to what you're doing? Uh... Yeah, I'm going to try to... Um, I want my tiger to flank. But I want to try to also, like, perceptively see how large this fog goes. Um, you can't see more than, like, directly in front of your face. This isn't a fog, per se. It's like a magical oh, you shadow. You a fog beforehand. I, I have used the word fog, but I see I see it as drifting in like a fog, where at the very edges you can kind of see it rolling in like a fog. But once you're in it, it's like a magical darkness where you can barely see your hands in front of your face. You know what I mean? Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, but that's what I'm going to do. Roll damage one more time, Donnie, for those oh. still in your orb. Oh, six. Hey, this skill's awesome. I should use it more. Eat me. Uh, and then this goes away. Now, what I want to do. Oh, Gary, I don't like this. Just seeing like sixteen. Oh no! <laughs> seeing like sixteen units of centipede and all those other shits just move in mass at in like in unison is terrifying. Yeah, we're not high enough level to fight this off. I don't think. Pretty sure our units are pretty, you know, they're just food. They're they're walking incubators for whatever these bugs are gonna eggs these bugs are gonna lay in them. Uh, this is just a horror movie. This okay. is no longer like a this isn't a fantasy battle. This isn't even fantasy genre. We walked into a horror film. <laughs> Ooh, horror D D, that'd be intense. The, uh, the, uh, I mean this is what it's turning into. We just walked into a horror movie. That's like that uh um that's like that zombie game that uh 
who are, are the original group wanting to play. Yeah. Yeah, we never got around to that. I was enticed, but we never got around to it. Oh, I think that one person was vetoing it or whatever. Oh. Quite a while ago. So, how are things looking right now? Hello? I probably spelt one of those words wrong, but I'm hoping you get what I mean. Oh, and then now I gotta roll. Oh, you're PMing. Okay, that's what's going on. Three, four. Seven. Miss hit Sarah roll a d20 plus three, Drusilla a d20 plus three, 17. Here succeeds 12. Here fails. I really wanted to be this this to be a massive battle with waves and everything, but I currently reject it or regret it greatly. Miss Me too. Oh, you would. You're dying. Um, roll another D twenty plus three for me, Drusilla. Twenty one. Who succeeds? And then Miss. Okay. Ants. I've got two alive still. One hit. I'm sorry, it's a guy who's. You're lucky I've been failing at my job as a DM because you have two people who are poisoned that I didn't even damage last turn, uh, and one person who's grappled that I allowed to attack. Uh -oh. mm. This guy moves here. This guy moves here. This poor actor is probably about to die. That guy's dead. Um, yeah, it's now your guys' turn. You're still you're up. Okay, uh, pikemen attack all pikemen. Uh, so the ones on the walls, the ones. This on guy's the grappled. Make a d20 plus three to see if he breaks it. These guys are poisoned, so you need three d20 plus three. And the one that's grappled, I'm assuming, somehow gets out. If he rolls high, oh yeah, yeah, he gets out. Do two more. Oh, two more. Mm -hmm. This guy is still poisoned, but this guy is not. Okay. 
Um, yeah, you can make them attack now. Okay, all pikemen attack. How many units is that? One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. D20 plus two for each of them. All right. Do I have to roll yet? Or am I all my guys dead? 13. You guys are dead. You got one guy left. 13. But we're still doing Drusilla's. 13, 13, 14, 21, uh, 16, 11, 21, 18, 11. The 14 hits. Anything above or 14 or above hits. Five, five to twelve. Twelve damage on on the first hit. So working left to right. Mm -hmm. Four on the second. Six, four, nine. Any kills? Let's see, twelve on the first guy. Uh, your first guy, I'm gonna say, is this guy. Do you want him to attack the ant or the centipedes? Uh, centipedes. Yeah, he's dead. Um, so this guy, who is your second guy, who would have hit, actually ends up missing because you had. I meant, I mean, there was a centipede right here. He could have swung at that one. He's down in the trenches. He hasn't come up yet. Mm. Um. So your second, third guy, which also hits, hits this guy. So the six damage goes to him. Uh, your fourth guy misses. Your fifth guy hits. So you did not roll enough. I didn't roll enough? Yeah, your 12 plus 2 is 14, dude. Roll one more d20. Or one more d12. So this guy takes... 9. And then... Your last one... Which would be this guy. Your last hit would be this guy. It attacks the ant. What do you mean? I didn't roll enough. I got five hits. I rolled five numbers. Then I rolled a Two, six one. Three, four, five. Oh. I mean, I'll one, take the six hit. Three. Oh, that's why. My bad. I mean. Hold on. I messed up. So this guy will take minus four. This guy hit. This guy missed. This guy hit, which I did. This guy hit, which I did. And then this guy missed. Okay, yep, I got it. Um, now it's time for your actions. Okay, I'm gonna... I gotta hold the line, so I'm gonna strike at these ones right here. Swing and a swing. 2d20 plus... Plus 4. The one to my left, I'm assuming a 17 hits. Yeah, 17 hits. D8 plus 3. 4 damage, uh, physical. No, no, ignore that. I rolled D8. Should be D6. I mean, they're all were under 8. I mean, if you want to tank it, you can. I was I said I said that before it actually generated the numbers. Okay. Well there you go. Same same damage anyways. Eight damage on electrical. I don't know if that wounds up killing it. <laughs> it wound up being the same damage both ways. Okay, my second set of swings. Uh 
Um, Neither one hit. Yeah. That's my turn. Okay, mm -hmm. Sarah, you rolled one for your archer and it missed with the four. Yeah. Um, and I'm assuming you're keeping to what you're doing in the shadows. I'm looking. Yep. Uh, okay. So, these bugs are going to make it up the wall. I'm kind of wondering where Sarah is right now. Like, these things are not not really being opposed that much. That'd be a good thing to wonder, wouldn't it? Yeah, it really is. I'm scratching my head. Is Sarah dead? Well, you saw her run into the shadows. What the fuck is she doing? I really don't have a token for these three, even though I should. So. Bam. Bam. And bam. Those three soldiers are going to be the ones. Okay, so. As per last time, when you finally, when you fell into dire straits, uh, the, the file or Sybil and Farlight show up. Save your ass. Um, Figured it had to happen. We weren't getting out of this ourselves. Eilorn. Farlight. Sybil. Okay, so... Eilorn comes in. One, two, three, four. He just comes in, running from the side. He stops right here and just slices into the enemies. Um, managed to hit four times, two to each enemy. This guy and this guy. And he cuts the ant to pieces and moves on to starting to slice up the assassin bug here. Firelight runs past him with her mace out. With her mace out wide, she brings it in, clips the assassin bug as she runs to it, and then in a circular motion, spins around, clipping the mace into the hard carapace of the bug again. Sybil comes out, uh, climbs up, uh, jumps out of the sewer, climbs up the wall, and just like unleashes a, a fan of knives all around her. About time. Managed to hit with all of them. Oh, she gets a plus 12? They are the big three. When they're serious, they get plus 12, yes. Yeah, those rolls are, yeah. <laughs> I've never felt more like an ant. Even though I'm fighting ants. Even though we're fighting ants. Yeah, just I know, just like... <laughs> just and I getting plus 4, plus 6 to our attacks. The, the the centipedes get plus eight. The ants get plus ten. Plus six. Our ants, the big, centipede both get plus six. The, the big assassin boss gets bugs plus get twelve. 10. Just just we're over here just. Just like hey, we showed up to the party. What's going? Oh, the party's just happening. Okay. It's like the level four warriors at a bar fight going against. Uh, <laughs> Level 12, uh, or, um, 
barbarians and the, the level 16 fighters. Yeah, the barbarians just are fighting amongst themselves and we're just kind of trying to squeeze into the fight. We just keep getting pushed out. Fight two. That was good. All right. Yeah. Okay. Well, we definitely needed some backup. Damn, my prophecy didn't come through then. Yet, at least. All right. That so it's the did. bug's turn. Fuck, this is gonna be a lot of rolls. One, two, three, four. And all of those hit. All the bugs hit? Well, the centipede. Have a plus six counter. modifiers. Be nice. Okay, I need one, two, three d20 plus three from you, Drusilla. Sometimes I don't even know what I mistyped, and I just have to type it, you know, in like twice. I just accept it sometimes. <laughs> like, it feels like I'm typing the same thing twice. But the first one is just like not an accepted, like, format or something. You put an X in the space in the first time, you look at it three times, like, that. that is right. The, the program is drunk. <laughs> yeah, seriously. Okay, well, uh, six. 17, 8. Okay, so those two are poisoned. Uh, I gotta roll damage. Ten and then thirteen damage. So thirteen damage to Sybil. Oh wait, no, it's four damage to him. And then one damage. Uh, At first, just, I was surprised any uh, of them were managing to hit Sybil, and I was just like, right, assassin bugs. Attack. They rolled high. Like, super high for Sybil's attack. Um, well, I, I play, I like play RNG fair. Like, if Sybil somehow manages to die from this, then, you know, she'll fucking die. Yeah, 225s like, and a 21. It's about as unlikely as Titania dying in, like, the first five rounds of, like, Fire Emblem. It doesn't mean it's not possible. Uh, do another d20 plus three for me, Drusilla. Two d20? Just one. d20 plus three. Four. He is... This guy is grappled. Oof. Okay. So 13 misses, the unnatural 20 misses, but 21 does hit Bylorn, so. He takes 9 damage. Okay. And these guys are now entering into the territory, but there they go. Oh, no, go away. <laughs> I don't like it. And it is your turn, Drusilla. Uh, Pikeman, attack. 
and just see what survives this well, round. Before you have him attack, roll one, two, three. Yep, just three. Three D twenty plus three to see if any of them shake their poison. Uh, one does. The other two will take a D four and damage. Pretty grim. Uh, I'm I'm so nervous. I'm I'm on the edge of my seat. I'm so nervous know. you're running away. I honestly like, have no idea what you you're have doing. no clue what Sarah is doing right now. She I could be well, I know, could be saving I know. you single handedly. That's the whole point. From my perspective, it looks like she's running away. So uh, I'm running yeah, away your... by running into the source. Roll oh, one, running. two, three, four. No, I get five. Well, six, seven, eight. D twenty plus two for your remaining pikemen for their damp for their attack. Uh, say again. Eight D twenty plus two. Miss, miss, definitely hits. Miss, miss, definitely hits. Miss and miss. So only your two crits hit. So from left to right, that would be this guy crits. And then one, two, this guy crits. So roll do 2d12. Double their roll for their damage. And... Not 2d12 twice, just 2d12 in general. Oh, I thought they both crit, so they I They did. I rolled. I'm doubling their roll. Oh. So you got a 10 and an 8 instead of a 5 and a 4. <laughs> uh, now Bylorn and the big three are up. So he's going to come in. Um, as you're observing, you kind of hear the... As Bialorn's swinging, you start to hear what kind of sounds like a sonic boom after each swing. Oh, fuck. Is this Zeus on the ground over here? No, he just ran up to me. Get it. No, not you. Get it, get it, get it, get my dog. Oh, Zeus. God, because oh. your dog's name is Zeus. <laughs> okay, wild. Get it, yep. Uh, all of those hit, and this guy just basically turns into meat pulp. Jesus Christ. Christ. And uh, then Farlight's gonna swing. Uh, you see her mace kind of grows. It, it's not encased in rock, but it actually seems to grow larger. Who agreed that they all would take one gate and we didn't split up and split them up too? Um, they did. And you guys, technically. This guy is meat pulp as well. It's like basically, Batman just basically like... smush. Uh, oh. And then Sybil, which you really can't see, so, but she's up there doing her her dance of blades and throwing throwing daggers basically at everything around her. Oh my gosh. And all of those hit as well. So five, five, ten, minus ten. So you're dead. Uh, you're dead. You took twelve. You take six. Not dead yet. And you take a. You're dead. Oh wait, no. You not take six. a. You're dead. Another four. You took ten, minus four. And you're dead. Um, Okay. Sarah, you have one archer still alive. Since when? I didn't roll attack last turn. Yeah, you did. You rolled one attack. It was a four. Not last turn. That's yeah, the turn before that. No, it was last turn. 
Either way, you have an archer alive. Do you want it to attack? I, 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 I'm looking like Donnie rolled 8d20 and uh, might as well. Actually, so n I, I completely forgot. Are my health portions still on the ground? Yeah, they are. Huh. I forgot about them too. My archer's supposed to pick those up. Oh, yeah. Those poor guys. Forgot they existed. Well, my uh, my one archer bends down and grabs them, chugs one of them, and then tosses the other one to Sybil. And tosses what, uh, what size did you drop? Uh, what's the low quality ones? I, I don't know. Fresh it. I mean, I don't know if those potions would have done anything because those assassin bugs are pretty much one shotting stuff. Just like creep along the edges. I'm uh, let's say I dropped five plus two modifier ones. Katie says hi, guys. Hi, Katie. They say hi. Uh, you're not gonna have an attack. Just drink and then check the potion and throw the other potion to Sybil. Uh, yeah, he he drinks. He picks them up, drinks one, and gives the other one to Sybil. Gotcha. And you're gonna keep to your actions. So it is now the enemy's turn again. So I get a turn. One. You already went. You attacked two bugs. All right. Okay. You rolled it wrong. I keep doing the space for some reason. Yeah, it's really an angle. Yeah. Okay, so Holy miss. shit. Hit. Hit. 10, 30, 20, 21, Hit. 16, 23, 13, 20, 17, Four, and nine. five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten of them hit. Okay, so Sybil takes one, two. So she'll take nine damage. This guy attacks the archer. He hits the 16 hits, yes. So he'll do the three damage to the archer. Roll AG twenty plus three for me, Sarah. This guy hits the seventeen, so that is another three. Seventeen. Succeeds. This guy has a miss. This guy has a net twenty, so that's double the one. So this guy only loses to the lucky roll. Uh, this guy misses. This guy has a 20, which is also a 1. Awesome. He lucked out twice. This guy misses. This guy has a 20, which is a 6. That is not lucky. This guy hits for the 1. This guy hits. Four to five. It's at this point that Borg remembers how nice it is to not be the DM during these fights. 
It sucks ball. This guy hits for four. And this guy misses. Okay, so the centipedes are swarming. Like that's that's the whole point of them. They're swarming and they're swarming hard. So uh, Drusilla, I need you to roll one, two, three, four, five, D twenty plus three, please. There you go. Two of them succeed. This guy fails. Three hand. Green. Poison. Bam. Uh, succeed and succeed. Okay. Uh, now the assassin bug. And a 20. Mrs. Sybil. Uh, now... It is your turn, Drusilla. Roll for me. One, two, three, D20 plus three. One net 20, a 10, and a 16. Fails. And succeeds. So this guy takes another two damage. Okay. And, uh, that's the end. Uh, now it's your turn. So do what you do. Pikeman attack. Uh, well, I, I definitely want this pikeman to attack that guy. <laughs> uh, Th Roll this guy. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, D, twenty, plus two. Okay. Good thing I spell check that roll. I almost put a space in there. You got two hits. So roll two D twelve. Two and an eight. Any deaths? Not quite. Um, now it's your turn. Do you okay. Uh, I don't think standing here is... Okay, there's... If I were to just crawl into this pit and use Scorching Ray, would it be able to slice through all these guys in one round? Hmm... That's a good question. That is a good question. You know what? I will give you what you can do is if you want to go here, you can roll 4d20, but it's going to be harder to keep it through each of them. So the first one just has to break their armor, but after that, it'll be a little harder to get through to each of them. Yeah, I do that. Slash R. 4D20. Damn. Nice. nice. So, since you got the net 20, I'll bypass the 4. Uh, the 18 will succeed as well, but the 8 will not. So, roll damage and three of them will take it. That is... one d 8 That's 3d8. An 8, a 3, and a 1. And then I unimbue my weapon. Like, I don't unimbue it. I'm not performing an action, but I stop bothering with that. And I shoot a second Scorching Ray. I'm just going to say I've clarified this before, and you need to remember this. If you cast a spell, you automatically unimbue your weapon. You cannot keep your weapon imbued and cast at the same time. 
Oh, I thought keeping imbued was an action, so I'd be like performing an action, then performing a spell as a sub action, or oh, maintaining right. imbued. It's a channeled spell. Anything channeling, if you use your magic at all for anything other than channeling, you break the connection you have. Well, then I guess I broke it last round, so I don't have yes. to bother with it. Yes, you did. Uh, so I Scorching Ray again. At 3d20 this time. None of them succeed. Can I add an intelligence modifier? Yeah, you? you add intelligence to your initial attack roll. Okay, so plus damage. four. Oh. Uh, 13 will hit, but it won't be enough to break through with the, with the tie into the second one. So one will do damage. Four damage. Hmm. Sarah, you still have one archer. What do you want it to do? Uh, I mean, this is go he's not going out without a fight. He he's gonna try to finish off that assassin. And going after the assassin. He feel he just drank that potion. He's feeling pretty good. Let me roll a seventeen. It goes to the roller. Take the attack. They have an AC of 17? Any mods? No, not for their melee. Five. Damage. Okay. So... How do I want to do this? Nylorn is going to advance. And he's actually going... 5, 10, 15, 20, let me get that check. Twenty three, not bad. So what he does is he's going to run, leap. As he's leaping, he actually seems to step on the air, and he leaps into the center of the wall about there. Um, as I've stated before, but I'm not going to state again, these guys are actually one square forward. I just don't want to mix the tokens. So he'll be right here. As he's here, he's going to <laughs> attempt to deftly cleave through the front four monsters while missing the four guards. So he will be rolling at disadvantage. God damn it, I did it again. Wait, who's the other one? The one on the left that looks like Phylorn? That's Farlight. Okay. I just don't have specific tokens for them. Okay, so a net one fails, obviously. So he's going to click this guy. The 12 plus 3 is 15, which still hits this guy. The 7 plus, or 12 plus 12 is actually 24, so that guy is definitely getting hit. And then this guy is 17 plus 12, so he'll get hit as well. Does six damage to this guy. Seven here. Oh, I shouldn't have let you do that. These guys are technically up there. Oh, well, too late now. <laughs> Five here. That's my fault anyway, so I'll just take the mistake for five years. Firelight is going to go here, and she's going to raise her mace above her head, 
basically create a giant boulder, which is going to throw the boulder down right here. So they will have a reflex save. Their whole collection of mobs hasn't really moved in the last like three turns. No, they have been. They're just in rough terrain, so they've been only moving three lines per turn. I've been doing it, counting. We probably would have lost every one of our guys by now if it weren't for that rough terrain. It actually was a very good move. Uh, I, I just remember looking like four turns ago and they were being at the crosshairs of the two turn, two circles. Uh, at least that's what I thought they were. It was probably the other group that was just, that's basically just made it to the wall. Well, they made it to the wall last turn. They just climbed up the wall. You fucked up again. I know. I don't know why I keep doing it. It's just natural for me to push the space bar for some reason. Let's say I will come here and avoid the big rock. Neither one of them avoid, or none of them avoid. None of the ants avoid either. So nine damage to each of them. Damn. For her next act, basic action, she's gonna shoot. Uh, it's gonna seem like she just points her hand out, and a, like a ball of fire goes. But that ball of fire is gonna penetrate into the center of the boulder. She just landed into the middle of them, and it's gonna explode into magma, coating everybody who just took damage in magma. Nice. All right. Yeah, that's pretty metal. That'll end her turn. Sybil. Being surrounded again, you, she's she's going to basically just sigh. And she's going to whip out her daggers. And instead of throwing daggers like she has been, she's just going to turn into like this tornado of flying blades. Or not flying blades, tornado of blades that just carves into anything that can't get away. So let's see. Our three, twenty, seven. Two of them actually do manage to get away. This guy goes here. This guy scuttles back down there. And this guy does not get away. So the assassin bug and the other guy will take every hit. And this guy is dead. And that guy is dead. Uh, okay. Um, now it's the bad guy's turn. One, two, three. One. One, two, three. Hmm. I think next round calls for a double magma orb, molten orb. One more wave of this point. 
malice kind of comes in. And he... Two, three, four, five. So Drusilla standing down here. You don't really see much. But Malice walks out, and as he's walking over the trench, like, this golden light appears over the trench. So you, you look up, and all you see is a golden light. And then as soon as he steps off, the golden light disappears. So you don't know who it was, but for the sake of the podcast and everything else, it was Malice. Um, he walks up, and uh, he kind of, like, bows his head towards Farlight, who's now right in front of him. And he goes, he very calm very quiet. He goes, you mind if I uh, help out? And Farlight, smiling, you know, having just magma blasted a bunch of fucking fucks to dust, goes, hey, why not? I'm have the, I had enough fun with my own wall. You can help out here. And he drops to one knee, has his hand on top of his hammer, uh, the butt of the hammer on the ground, and he pulls out the talisman to his god and begins to pray. And as he prays, a divine light smites all the weaker bugs, leaving only the ants and the assassin bugs. But as he does this, it's not as simple as I make it sound. He actually kind of like collapses down to both knees, and his hand slides down to the shaft of his, his war hammer, but he can't quite keep it up. He's shaking and trembling, and uh, he kind of like almost is, is is essentially useless right now. Shit, this really would have been nothing if we could have done that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, seriously. This this is the, oh fuck, I might actually kill you guys, Dave here. So, uh, um, I was going to go forward that know, shit, don't you're, worry. You're not going to kill me. <laughs> oh, yeah, you're nowhere near the battlefield. He's going to crawl my way up and cast Magma Orb and everything was going to be okay. Either way, there are still enemies to fight, um, but they are already moved and they're not close enough to do anything. So, Drusilla, you are up. Okay. Um. Well, seeing as how I crawl up and I just see Malice on the ground, I'm like, I didn't even know he was here. But... <laughs> I'm also kind of confused because everything else is dead too. Not everything. Pay attention to the map. There's still. I know. I know. I know. I know. I know. But in but retrospect, like all, all when, when like from... 20% of the enemies are still standing, it's like mostly everything's dead. This yeah. is still pretty shocking. I hope you understand. Yeah. Um. So I, I'm partially confused, but I still see like this clump of like ants and this weevil. And I was hell bent on using Molten Orb, anyways. So. Can I focus cast Molten Orb to expand it fast enough that they can't roll a reflex check? That is something I am willing to work on you with, but not in the middle of a battle. You can cast it, and they'll roll reflex. But the ants don't have a their reflex zero, so unless they get a decent roll, they're fucked. Okay. They all uh, well, 20s. I'm going to use Which the Molten Orb. They didn't, so. Make more Orb over here, make more Orb over here. Oh, you're going you're gonna to try to encompass these guys as well? I'm not yeah. going to bother drawing the circles. I mean, yeah. I can't think of what else I was going to do with my second action. So this guy actually does manage to get out. I just moved there. Um, now i got to roll for those two. Roll 20. So this guy, he was right on the edge of where your orb would have been anyway, so he just kind of scuttles back a little bit. And a 16 is not quite enough, so he'll still get burned. Okay, roll damage. Two. Roll two damage since you're doing two orbs. How many targets do I hit? Four altogether. Just roll damage twice. One for the three ants and one for the assassin bug you managed to clip two nat ones wow dude all of your magma orbs nat one how yeah. is that <laughs> how is that even physically possible it, i mean this is this is my uh this is this is me this is me downing danger right here this is my uh defining um feature 
Okay. Uh, uh, I specialize in that once. It's my class specialty as a person. At this point, it's impressive. <laughs> like I, I'm not even mad bit. anymore. I'm just like, wow. <laughs> like I'm recording today, and I'm so happy I'm recording. No one would believe me. <laughs> Be like, yeah, yeah, I played with this guy. He rolled literally 12 nat ones within an hour. So like, and this guy, this guy hates RNG, and none of us really get it. <laughs> uh, oh, no, I, I completely understand. I just say, fuck you. <laughs> We're using RNG. <laughs> That's why I play is for the RNG. Okay, I mean, I, I cast these Magma Orbs, like, like my last hurrah, like I'm almost out of MP. Oh, I'm saying, I just just roll three nat ones in a row. So no, no, I'm talking like all of us. We've rolled more nat to ones tonight than I think we have in can, our members' entire campaign up to this point. It has been a lot of nat ones today. Like I am seriously tempted to go back and look over the videos, like with the and you rolled that wrong. With the amount oh. of nat ones we rolled tonight, it, I'm pretty sure it exceeds anything we have up on YouTube right now. Hashtag go check it out, guys. Leave a comment, like, subscribe. <laughs> nice plug. Thank you. I will role play this all for you after I finish my rolls. I mean, I can't lie. After the other people showed up, he said to do a lot more, um, a lot more rolls than before. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So what just happened? Uh, as I was doing my rolls, Bylorn rushed up to the last assassin bug that was on the wall up here, and with his sonic boom enhanced blade, I'm not going to say more than that because I don't want to give away anything that somebody might meta try to copy, uh, but basically cuts this assassin bug to ribbons. Farlight runs up to this being Farlight, runs up to this one with her increased size mace and just pulps it. Just just smacks down on the carapace so much that green ichor and bug guts are just flying everywhere. She's just got a feral orcish grin on her face. Ew. Sybil runs up to the edge and throws out six more daggers, but these ones, instead of just being regular daggers, seem to be glowing. And as they fly, they penetrate each one penetrates deeply into the at carapace. This ant barely escaping with its life as it manages to have a knee-jerk reaction that has a blade cut off an antenna rather than puncture its eye. That's disgusting, yeah. but also awesome. And that uh, ends their turn, so it's Bug's turn. Which they're still in shitty territory. So one, two, <laughs> three... <laughs> the, this shitty territory has seriously made it a lot easier for the big three to wipe shit up. <laughs> One, two, that guy actually gets close enough to attack. And this guy will be stuck down there since it'll technically be one, two, and then three as well. Okay, so one guy is close enough to attack. Our light. Yes, buddy? Oh, I see. You stacked it up on the towels. Ooh, an unnatural 20. Seeing how it is unnatural, it is not actually quite enough to pierce Farlight's armor. Um, Sarah, or Drusilla, technically, and Sarah, you're both technically up. Um, okay, uh, I guess I'll, I mean, I don't even, oh, I see Malice on the ground. I know it looks like, uh, Sybil's probably got this, but I don't know what that Assassin Bug's thinking. And I've seen them wipe out our guys, so I'm gonna... I know I should focus on the ant, but my knee-jerk reaction is to get this thing before it gets too malice. So I'm gonna run up, and I'm gonna swing at it twice. Okay. You're no longer imbued, so remember I know. a regular swing. I'm going off of, uh, just reflex. I'm rushing in, not thinking. Plus... Uh, 
Not that it probably would have mattered. <laughs> um, oh, those are both pretty shitty rolls. Yeah. A 12 and an at one, which are 13 and that one. Both mid. I get second set of swings. I forgot. You do. And that wasn't any better. A six and a seven. I am glad this is being recorded. This needs to be documented. Yeah, RNG hates you guys tonight. Uh, okay. <laughs> um, well, now it's their turn. Bye, Lauren's going to jump down into the trench. And since it's just an ant, he's just going to swing at it normally. Got the backslash. Yep, that guy's dead. So as as Biolorn's jumping down into the trench, he's swinging. He swings a little early for his first two, but his third, fourth, and fifth swing just cut into the ant's head, cutting it into three pieces that just kind of slap off in a nice little triangle. Jesus. Firelight. With her big old mace, is gonna kind of chuckle at the bug that just tried to bite her, and go for her swing. Uh, all four, nope, the last one does not hit. Three hit. I would say if a three plus a twelve also hit, that'd be pretty impressive. Nope, that one missed. What was the modifier I gave her? A plus twenty. No, it's a plus eight. It's a d12, not a d20. Not a d10. Oh, wow. Three nat ones and a three. Not very good, but still enough to switch. So she uh, kind of like as she's turning, she swings, glances off the carapace, but it's enough to crack it. As she's coming back for her return swing, she cracks the carapace one more time. And with a grin and a little bit of frustration, she slams down head on, which is enough to break through the carapace and eventually smash the bug. Is this Sybil hulking it? No, it's Farlight. Oh, uh, I thought Sybil was okay. No, Sybil's down here. Okay. Sybil, on the other hand, is going to do an acrobatic strip, which is agility for my campaign for those who do not know. Uh, I Massively mean, that, one, that one's pretty standard with normal. Well, I'm just clarifying to be sure. Uh, then 4d20 plus 12. Oh, four of those hit. Four d6 plus. She is going to take a step back and then run, similar to what Sarah did earlier, jump off the little bit of a ledge that's on the edge of the wall. Jump over the ants to about here. But as she is flying through the air, she's doing one of those pirouette things you see the circus people do when they're doing the the ropes. And four daggers just pierce down through the ant and just fucking destroy it. Dead skis. Oh shit. Uh it's just a lot of carnage on the battlefield. A second before we get too far, uh, as Sarah drew her fork, do you wish to properly role play this on your own for this last part, or do you just want me to take over? As well as, do you wish for the conversation you just had to be made public or not? I leave the decision to you because she is still your character. Uh, I didn't know uh, if anything else was going to happen with what I was currently doing. But I can... You're just going to keep chasing. Uh, I mean, that's what I was doing. I, I didn't know if... Uh, I mean, I can continue. I should preface. If I'm meeting back with everyone else, I can continue. My character. Do you want to meet back with everybody else? I, I'm in the middle of the fog right now. I don't know what you were planning uh well basically 
when you sent your last thing, I just figured that's what you were going to do. You know, chase off into the wind. But if you, as the fog rolls back, you realize you get to a certain point, you kind of come to the end of the fog as you can't see the guy. Uh, it comes to thoughts that maybe he teleported out or he didn't necessarily run away. He just disappeared. So you have no sense to track him. Okay, I mean, on that point, yeah, I didn't know if you were going to have him, like, lead me back to the fight or whatever. So I was kind of waiting for the, that. But, yeah, uh, I mean, I'll I'll make my way back. So, so you kind of come back. You and your tiger. Bam. Um, at this point, um, before you're actually back, I just brought your topics back on. Um, the big three and Malice will come to talk to Drusilla. Uh, as they approach you, they go, well, so this is where the wave was. We sat there for a good six, seven hours waiting for enemies to come and none showed up. Honestly, I, I'm a little short of words right now. I'm a bit shell-shocked after like all the bloodshed on both sides. I'm just standing there like mouth agape like it, yeah. Yeah, there were a lot of bugs. Yeah, yeah. They must have been trying to do a con uh consort I don't know the word. Concentrated attack to, to break through one wall and get to the centers instead of spreading their forces. Um glad we came when we did. Uh, some of the urchins got through and told us you guys were having a, a hard time over here. After probably your fourth or fifth death, they started the communication to get us here. Sorry it took us so long. At, at that, I, I kind of just, like, my mouth still agape, and I turn my head slowly, and I look at the wall, and I see some of the archers, like, limp arms hanging over the sides of the wall. I'm like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like I don't I don't I'm I'm short of words right now. I'm just like at this point, if you want, you can join in, Sarah, as you would be approaching at this point. Alright. Uh I I'm gonna come in like this with you know, full on sprint with my tiger and kind of like just stop and stand off and like I uh, uh, looks like you guys cleaned it all up. I was hoping there would be something left for me. Uh, I, I, my eyes wide, and you're alive? As Drusilla is realizing you're alive and saying something, at the same time, you've got Sybil on your side. She's a blonde one. Mm -hmm. I made her different because she was ranged. Uh, Sybil chuckles and goes, yeah, well... As we were just telling Drusilla, nobody came to our side of the wall. It seems like it was a direct attack trying to break through one of the walls instead of trying to go through the whole city. Um, we were told by an urchin that you guys were having trouble and rushed as soon as we could, but it still took us time. Yeah. Well, it's a good thing you guys came when you did. We weren't... We still lost a lot. At, sure. at, the, at that notice, I uh, I look towards the wall and see how much damage is done to like the actual structure. Actually, there's not a lot of damage to the structure since the insects were just, you know, climbing I'm, the wall. I, I'm not talking by the insects. By what? The, uh, the, the, my two volcanic storms and a couple oh. of molten blasts. Well, the Molten Blast didn't really do anything, but the Volcanic Storms did leave. You know, there's a few craters. Nothing too bad. All right. Uh, while we're talking, I want to use my mending skill and repair the wall and the... um. Uh, what, what, what are these fucking things called? You just can't repair the ballista. I'll, I'll give you the wall. I but should I'm be not able to based on my skill. Or based on the spell. Mending. Last I, last I looked it up, 
At least. Can't find it. Um, sorry, just so you were saying something. I was just doing it while I was, while we were talking. I'm just yeah, like, no. Sarah, where I'm were you? Through. I thought you were dead. People were dying over on your wall. What were you doing? Oh, uh, I, I was trying to end this. The, the, well, you didn't the, end it. These guys did. After a lot of people died. The, the, the person who was attacking, I believe, is attacking for the king. Well, I, I think they're attacking for, they were attacking for me. He's trying to bring me on his side. On his side. I don't understand. Who? Why? As I was saying, he was trying to bring me on his side. I believe his end goal and his master's end goal is the king. Although he did say that the Chancellor was a puppet. Um, so, I don't know. I would suggest that the first course of action is freeing the King from the wrongful imprisonment that it is. But I couldn't get rid of the guy. He just disappeared. So I must, I need to go find him. Because if any hope of stopping these raids on you guys, it's, I, I need to go hunt him down. Yeah, and before, like... before we continue with the chit chat, I will clarify, I just read your mending skill. And it says all pieces of an object must be present for this spell to function. I am going to say, as the DM, after receiving, you know, falling rocks and molten orbs on the ballista, some of the pieces have been burnt and crisped and jazzed. So the ballista cannot be repaired mm. by mending. Zero but out the of wall three of them? Be. I thought the one yeah. only got attacked by an ant. Oh, yeah, one did only get attacked by an ant. I'll give you that. I'll take one out of three. I was just hold I was trying for three, but I'll take a one out of three. Okay. 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 Anyway, continue with your chit chat now. Um like, oh. You know you know who's pulling the strings behind these raids? No, if I did, I would have said who it is. I was just talking to someone who's a puppet by the person who's in charge of these raids. The puppet was behind the raids, but they're not in charge of anything. They're, they're just following orders. They're the one, just, they're, that's the person who is trying to convince me to join their side. There's a lot to take in, especially after all this fighting. I just look at Malice and make sure he's okay. At, at this moment, I want to cast Cure Light Wounds on everyone in this who I'm talking to. You want to what? Sorry. I want to cast Cure Light Wounds on everyone. Oh, actually, nobody's really damaged. Except for Sybil took a little bit of damage, but... Too bad. Okay. Uh, I I'm looking to Malice right now. Oh. Did you ask him something that I missed? No, I'm just, just making sure he's okay, because he collapsed as soon as I came out of that moat. And everything oh, was dead. Uh, he's, he's exhausted, uh, and he kind of looks at you and gives you a bit of the stink eye and goes, oh, now you want to help me. But in the city, all you talked about was how much of a hypocrite I am and how I'm controlling these people. Thank you. You're okay. I, I, I guess I just leave him there then. <laughs> He shrugs and kind of laughs at you as he slowly gets to his feet. He goes, I always knew you had a caring heart, Drusilla. Uh, and that, though, he, he, before you can retort or anything, he kind of nods to everybody and goes, uh, even though it seems like everything was down here, I'm going to get back to my wall just in case. 
I don't want to leave my men for too long. And he turns and he walks away without another word. And as again, as he's walking over the trench, uh, a golden bridge kind of just appears beneath his feet. And then he walks off. I gotta, I gotta check on my pikemen, guys. I say as I, I make my way back to all these people who are just suffering from poison damage and as, shit. As, as she's leaving, I want to toss the rest of my the seven potions I have health potions I have left to her. I, I take them. Like, well, like I said, I'm not exactly chatty right now. This is still like I am kind of in shock. Um, since those Malice and Drusilla walked off, um, the big three approach you and go, so did you no, find out any... Back. Move the last one back. Uh, did you, uh, find out anything useful, or are we just kind of stuck with everything? Uh, I, I, I respond with, the. Uh, um... Well, here's what I know. Or here's what I got out of the guy before he poofed and disappeared like the coward he is. He's in charge of the, these raids. He's attacking, but he's doing what he's told by someone higher up. He, for some reason, I feel like the king is involved. But the king is imprisoned, so I'm not sure how that's tied together, but the chancellor, he said, is a puppet who like him, but he made it seem like the chancellor is a pu isn't quite, isn't as powerful as him. Either way, the, the, the chancellor's puppet, and I told him, well, if he wants... He should attack the Chancellor instead. And he just had a slimy excuse on why he's attacking the city. So my best bet for you guys is if they hit, I, I, my best hope for you guys is to either well, I, I am going to go search, track him down, and track down his master. And not to mention, I have other shit to deal with that I've way, I'm 70 years too far or beyond from solving. So I need to go take care of this. Uh, and if the raid attacks again, everyone just pick up and move. You're not. Let them attack the if there if there's no no one in the lower city. Then either they're gonna finally have to attack Golden Hill or they're gonna have to leave. But uh, it's not worth you guys suffering for them. Interested in the people who are not receiving any damage from it. They uh, they look at you and they go that that sounds like you're 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 leaving. We we didn't expect you to stay. Don't get me wrong, but do you mind if we ask where what direction you're gonna start looking for the guy? Um, and they also go if you remember last month before we talked about how we talked about how there was a a lead to the raids in the southeast mountains or southwest mountains. Yeah, southwest mountains. Um, if you're going to go hunt this guy down, that might be a good place to start. Well, we are at the west gate. So, I'm probably going to head there first. After that, most likely north. Northeast. That's or northwest. One of those three, it's northern somewhere. It's been so long, I'm, it's going to take me a while to find, but I'm going to have to find my home back because 
I I need to go go home. Like I said, it, it, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna take this guy out and take down the master, and then and then I just I need to go home. I need to find. I need to bring them, bring back what I found. It, it, I mean, I left 70 years ago, and it's only felt like five. It's only felt like two years, but it turned out to be 70 years ago. They kind of nod, and they go, yeah, we didn't expect you and Drusilla to help as much as you did, though. Don't, uh, don't take this the wrong way. We appreciate everything you've done for us. Um, and we're glad you did stay. I uh, I mean I'm glad I did. I I'm going to be leaving plenty of memories behind, and I'm stuff I'll never stuff I'll cherish. They kind of nod their heads, and each one reach out to shake your hand. Uh, I, I shake all their hands. And then uh, I kind of like look at my hand and uh, my left hand on the back of it and hold it up to my chest. I'm like, if I find a way, I will let you guys know. Or if you figure out a way, let me know. Hinting at the back of my hand or whatever. Uh, they, they kind of nod their head and they say, we'll keep an eye out. Uh, it's the least we can do for all you've done for us. Oh, I, I was referring to freeing the king. Oh, uh, I thought you were referring to your hand. Oh, no, I'm I'm keeping the hand. Yeah, okay. I was referring uh, to, like, freeing the king. Okay. Either way, they, uh, they nod and they go, um, I mean, we'll keep our eyes open, but we... We have no plans of trying to assist the king, to be honest. He uh, made his own bed in our eyes. Um, meta question. Which yeah, one of the them knows... Which of them? Which one of them was at a like adult life when the king last ruled? Lorne, like, he's an elf. Lorne, Lorne. Yep. I go. Um. No. Yeah. I'm just. Uh. I I remember the old king, before he was imprisoned. He's still in there. I could tell. But. If. If I come back in, you know, 70 years and he's still imprisoned, uh, or if I come back, you know, and he's still imprisoned 70 years later from now, I'll, I'll offer him for you. And I chuckle. Yeah. Um. At that point, I, uh, yeah, I'm going to jump on my tiger. Be like, yeah. well. I'm going to end these raids for you once and for all. If you need me, send an owl. A man on horseback won't be quick enough. They uh, they all nod. And they... Uh, they uh, but before you leave off, they go, aren't you going to say bye to your companion? Uh, I... I uh, and I yell, "Hey, Drusilla!" I look over my shoulder after uh, handing out some uh, health potions. I just see Sarah shouting at me. I'm just like, "What?" I'm headed out. I don't know if. Donnie heard any of that, but it cut out after it headed. Yeah, yeah, oh. it cut off. I'm headed out. I just say go then. Just go. 
I might be completely meta here, but I do not think Drusilla would say just go. She'd be like, what the fuck? Where are you going? Sure. I'm I'm still kind of like uh playing up the exhaustion of the post battle stress, but yeah, sure. Um where? At this point, I, I I my tiger walks over to on the other side of the trench, so I don't have to yell anymore. I uh I'm gonna go end this. What do you mean? How? The the guy in the fog shadow things aren't uh it's not done between me me and him oh. i'm gonna go finish this finish his master um i told the other three but you know you should free the king when you have a chance uh, i'll make my way back here but it might not be for another 70 years am i right that's Incredibly selfish. How can you put that on me? Or don't. I don't care. Find your circle six. I'm just saying. This town will be better with... Speedless City's hero. Not me. I have stuff... That That's a better Drusilla. Right there. Say, I, I'm gonna go take out the man behind these raids. If that... Yeah, like hell you are. Yeah, what, are you going to join me? With a legion of minions like that? It'll be like jumping to a volcano. It'll be a drop of water falling into a desert. Just like Zern, what are you going to do? Just like Zern you know, took you out, too? No, I'm going gonna, gonna to cut the head off the snake. And after that, I need to go home. Like I said, it's been 70 years. For me, I left home two years ago. I need to get back. But Think about this, Sarah. Whoever is doing this, I think he's scarier than Zern ever was. Drusilla, as long as I'm in this town, he's going to keep coming back. Because of you? He wants me on his side. On his side. What's special about you? I don't know. Go ask him. I just kind of, like, give you, like, a sideways glare, like, no fucking way. All right, fine, I'll go ask him, and I'll send an owl your way with the answer. I... You've got a death wish, that's... I can't stop you. I've never been able to stop you from doing what you want, but... At, Think at, twice about this, Sarah. At, at the death wish part, I'm like... You know, something's going to give me eventually. I've cheated death too many times now to stop. <laughs> and, and and then I, I, uh, I go, uh, I like start to walk away and I go, it's been good, Drusilla. It's been a lot of things. I don't know if I would call it good, especially the where it's heading now. All right. See you later. I hope you have a good one. I'll see you soon. I just huff. I I look at uh see Sarah riding off into the sunset. See uh all these dead and maimed soldiers. The ones that are alive are writhing in agony. I look out and see the legions of dead minions. I just say This city doesn't need another villain, and I'm definitely not the hero it deserves. I can't stay here either. Um, well, okay. we are going, we are going to call it there for tonight. Hey, hey, hang on, hang on. Mm -hmm. and, and he told me I was riding off in the sunset. I wasn't that far yet. I, I just went back to the big three and I was going to oh. say bye to them. Okay. Oh, <laughs> I, so yeah. like, I rode, I rode back to them because, you know, it's like mm -hmm. a couple gallops and I'm like, all right, well, now I'm out. Just still made that a little easier. Um, I hope to see you again. Most likely will. If not, you'll hear from me one way or another. They, uh, they all kind of nod their heads and say goodbye. Uh, they let you know that the little four ballast that you're going. Um, 
but as you read off again there, we are going to call it for tonight before Drusilla leaves town or anything like that. Um, for my closing statements, for anybody who is new to the D&D world and listening to us for the first time to get your experience, that was basically us writing off Sarah Snow. Our friend Bork has decided that he would like to re-roll a character. But Sarah See, Snow being relatively important to... Huh? Now you just ruined all the magicalness of it. You I'm gotta let it sit. Let it, let it ferment. Let it ferment. <laughs> Either way. Um, Sarah is actually relatively important to my storyline. So instead of killing people as is prone to happen in Dungeons and Dragons, uh, we decided to write her out in a way that will allow her to still be alive. Um, as you could tell. So next week, we will be introducing whatever the crazy mind of Bork comes up with for his next character. Um, and somehow tying that character to Drusilla or not. We'll, we'll see how the interaction goes. Um, I'm looking forward to it. But yeah, so tune in next time to see what Bork comes up with and where Drusilla and this new character head off to or if they end up battling and trying to kill each other immediately. Possible. God, I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. Sarah rides off <laughs> in the sunset, new character joins, kills Drusilla first day. All right, well. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> there goes my story. That was my character. <laughs> Drusilla looked at him the wrong way when he was a kid. <laughs> you want to kill her ever since. Okay. <laughs> um, hope you guys all tune in for those of you who have been with us from the start of our podcast and YouTube and everything else journey I appreciate as well as I'm sure my Same. fellow players appreciate your guys' support we hope you enjoy our storylines and our craziness even though most of the time we just yell at each other uh, <laughs> And yeah. hope you guys tune in. If you want to leave comments, please do so, uh, do so on YouTube. It's easiest for us to check the YouTube comments other than the podcast comments because we use a site that sends us to a bunch of different podcasts. So we don't really get the comments on there. Where YouTube, we have the direct account and getting the comments is much easier. So if you listen to this on the podcast and you want to say something... Go to YouTube, drop a comment on one of the episodes, and we'll take a look at it. That's all I got. I say, cool. uh, well, I hope to see you guys next week. So yeah, check out. I I uh, check out. Um, hopefully I get brought in next week. If not, the week after. But yeah, it's gonna be fun. Yeah, it's a uh, it's a new frontier. We're rolling a character. Doesn't happen very often with us. Yeah, it, honestly, it's one of my favorite things because re-rolling a character or bringing in a new character always, no matter what you're doing, it always spices up a storyline. Yeah, that's for sure. But, all right, this has been the Tales of Barn Tome 8 by EAE d and I'm Bork. I'm saying see you later, everyone, and have a good night. And also to my co-hosts, Dying Danger and the Man Bear. Hey, see ya. Have a good one.